And welcome to the WW Radio Show, your Walt Disney World information station. I am your host, Lou Mangiello, and this is show number 600. And I'm once again, 15 years later, still here to help you have not only the best possible Disney vacation experience when you go to the parks, but I also want to continue to bring you some of that Disney magic wherever you are with the podcast, my live video broadcasts on Facebook every Wednesday night, videos, blog, special events, books, and more. Whether it's your first time visiting or you've been hundreds of times, if you're planning your next vacation or love the history, details, secrets, and stories, there's something in the show for you because each week I'm going to take you from the parks to the screens and everything in between. If you're a new listener, welcome. Thank you. Please go back check out some or all the past episodes for interviews, top tens, reviews, and more. You can subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts and find everything else at the all-new www.radio.com. So, 600 episodes and more than 15 years of podcasting. If you would have told me that back in 2003 when I started writing my first trivia book, I never would have believed it. Yet here we are. And so this week... I want to celebrate you and with you and the show that you have helped create and grow over the years, which is why we're going to look at the top 10 shows and moments from 600 episodes and 15 years of WW Radio. I'll then have the answer to our last Walt Disney World trivia question of the week, and I'm going to pose a new challenge for your chance to win a brand new Disney prize package. Then stay tuned to the end of the show. I'll have more information updates, your voicemails, and more. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's episode of the WW Radio Show. You found that spot on the dial. Give a listen and stay for a while. Time for us to say hello. WDW Radio. News and rumors and interviews. Trivia, history, and reviews. All the Disney stuff you need to know. WDW Radio. It's time to hear all about a magical place. Disney World will always put a smile on your face. Now the time is almost here. Sit right down, put on your mouse ears. Already, let's get on with the show. WDW Radio. Yeehaw! This is Bob Jackson from Walt Disney World's Port Orleans Riverside Resort. And you're listening to Lou Mangello and the Walt Disney World Radio Show. Hi, this is Cindy Morgan, and you know me as Yori from Tron. And you're listening to Lou Mangello on WDW Radio. Hi, this is Iron Chef Kat Cora, and you're listening to the WDW Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're listening to WDW Radio on your internet dial. <laughs> This is Dave Barry and Ridley Pearson, and you're listening to WDW Radio. 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 Hello there. This is the Dream Finder, your unemployed host of the old journey into imagination. If you have any work, please get back to me. But in the meantime, you're listening to WDW Radio. I love Disney because for me, it's really built on a foundation of memories and emotions. And 
also for me, that's really what this show is. And I still cannot believe that it's been more than 15 years since I literally asked Jeeves, for those of you that remember, asked Jeeves what a podcast was back in very early 2005, late 2004, and started one just a few weeks later. And yet here we are together at show number 600. And it's just a number, right? But I think for you, it's a reason to commemorate and to celebrate because it really is a testament to you and your time and the community that you have helped to create and build and foster and nurture. And look, if you know me, I say this all the time, I don't care about the numbers, and, and and I mean that. And when I say I don't care about the numbers, what I mean is that I don't. I, I never look at the numbers in terms of downloads, how many people are listening or watching. Like I check every so often just to make sure that it's actually still working. But I, I don't care about the number that's listening. I care about who is listening. And I think so many people, especially in the podcast space, are so concerned with growing numbers and vanity metrics, I instead choose to worry about who's there and how I can help and serve you. And if you like the show and what you hear and the community, I think that you will tell others. And I think that's part of what makes this community you have built so special because the people who are here are here for the right reasons. You want to be here. You're not tricked into being here. I don't, you know, um, I offer you something to join and, and listen. And more importantly, you know that you belong. And I have said literally since day number sh- day number one that this show, um, including and especially this episode, is like all others for you and by you and with you. And uh, I have to admit, before we even get started, that I honestly had a very difficult time and was somewhat hesitant trying to figure out what to talk about this week um, because I don't I never want to feel like it was self-serving or or anything about me and I instead wanted to recognize the the significance of the number and and I think what you have helped to create and achieve and so speaking of numbers that's what we're going to look at uh, because I'm asked all the time like what are some of my favorite shows and moments and guests? But I want to share not just mine, but some others as well. And so this week, we we collectively are going to share our top 10 moments or shows from 600 episodes and 15 years. And two of the people that have very much been part of and have shared that journey with me is, ladies first, Becky, Ma- Becky Mankin from MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. Hi. It is so awesome to be here for this because you're always telling me I never listen. So this is the point <laughs> that I get to stop and say, no, I can show you that I've listened to at least 10. Becky so, has you know. literally been doing a lot of research in the last 24 hours. I can assure you it's of that. It's weekend. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I've been kicking back. I just got my list. I'm all good to go. You're very happy with the list that I sent you, lining at lining up every <laughs> listing every single episode. You know, you? <laughs> I literally had to print like half of a ream of paper just to print all these out. So, <laughs> uh, and I can't believe it's 600 shows. And going back, realizing, I think I was on what like number 51 or something. Oh, look at you! To, you did do a little. Be... I mean, it's wrong. It's completely wrong. But that's okay. We'll get to that. Oh <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> Becky's I'm going back sit, and doing this is, I, I am now. I'm going to start Googling. I'll go on mute for a second and feel free it's to. It's okay. Move. I've already done the research, and it's such a milestone moment that I actually remember the number. But lest we forget, we cannot have a top 10 list without Mr. Top 10 himself, the one and only, the man of many monikers and names. He's been called everything from Tim Samantha Brown Foster to many other things in between. I want to, of course, welcome back my longtime friend, Mr. Tim Foster from Guide to the Magic and Celebrations Magazine. Lou, I, I love you, Lou. You know I love you. There's a but, I'm there's so a but glad coming. You didn't, I'm so glad you didn't remind. No, there's no but. The, but I, I'm just glad you didn't remind everybody about Bananas Foster because that took me years to live down. 
So I'm glad you didn't bring that up again. I was Thanks, going buddy. To, he wasn't, so. But you did. You did bring it up. So that's actually super helpful. So thank wait you for minute. resurrecting that. Name. Well, wait, uh, man, you're going to edit this, right? Well, and listen, you <laughs> guys know me well enough. Again, I know that you actually don't go back and listen, but I, Lou, I should... listened to every show. It was so hard for me to pare down. What could I even get to my top hundred, my top 200? I have 12. Or maybe you're not buying it. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> but it, well, it's funny you say that because um, there's only been one show. I mean, I really don't edit for a number of reasons, right? One, and this as long as we're going 600, I'm going to go sort of behind the scenes a little bit. I really try not to edit the show because I really want it to be very conversational. I want you, the listener, to feel as though you're sitting with us in my office, at a table, at a restaurant, at an event, being part of the conversation. I think sometimes editing doesn't make it feel disingenuous, but I want it to be very authentic and more importantly, very transparent. So usually barring something very egregious or Becky's potty mouth, I never really have to edit anything. Uh However, there is one episode, there's one person in 600 episodes and 15 years that I've ever had to actually censor on the show. Timmy Foster for a brand new Tesla X. Who is that person? Well, it can't be Becky because she's here. (laughs) It wasn't me, I think. It was not you. Becky Mankin, I know I'm, you've done I'm your all, research. I'm all I'm all at uh, Twitter. I can't I can't wait to hear this. Who is it? So is, uh, would we be surprised once we hear who it is? We're going to go. Oh, yeah, of course. That you'll be very very surprised. You'll hmm. be very surprised. Hmm. No, I'm I'm going to wait for the answer. It was Alice Davis. It had to have been Alice Davis. It was Alice Davis because I tell the I story. I admire all the time. Alice Davis. <laughs> <laughs> Poor sweet little old Alice Davis in her home, talking about Mark Davis and Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, was talking, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make you go back, including you, Tim Foster, go back yeah. and listen to that episode um, where she's talking about the creation of Pirates of the Caribbean. What was and- the word? I, well, if I had to edit her, <laughs> going to edit it then. Like I, I certainly can't say it again. So <laughs> maybe yeah. I have the raw footage. You no, you wouldn't. I, I don't. But. <laughs> wouldn't that be awesome? It would. I, I'm going to go back to that episode, record it, and edit in my own what I think. You go back to show 193, and you will find. Uh, and you and actually, you can actually hear the edit. You can actually hear the edit that that I made. Never unhear it once you hear it. Once you hear it, you can't unhear it. But did you both know that not even close, like it literally isn't even a horse race, you two have been on the show more than anybody. Like not even close. What do we win? You get to be on show 600. (laughs) Can I, uh, can I? disqualify myself tim foster that's mean way to go becky good job pal how many episodes do, yeah. out of these 600 do yeah. you think that you've been on 85 seriously <laughs> yeah because it's 86 86 oh my god <laughs> did you just guess no, I- no, no, no. I know because I have a list of every show I've been on and I went through. Them. I actually did go through a lot of shows and, and, and listen to them because I wanted to be prepared. Well, Tim, that's very impressive. And not only that, it really I touches my heart to shocked. know that you care. So now let's see when I ask Becky. Becky, how oh many shows have you been on? 230. Okay. I have. I, I honestly. All right. I have a list, but I didn't count. Um, <laughs> Do you think it's more or less than little Timmy Foster? I'm going to say more. more. I'm going to say more. more. I'm going to say 90. You are incorrect. You lose. You get nothing. Good day, sir. Can I I guess? Go ahead. 212. No, that's ridiculous. Uh, That's that's 114. 114? Triple digits, yo. Wow. I win. 
I, I what do if, want something. I don't know what that is, though. 212 between us, then. Well, here's another question. Who was on the show first, Becky or Tim? I'm going to say Tim. Him. Episode. <laughs> No, I, yeah. No. This is crazy. I can't believe if Tim you actually said did research something, tonight. I know it's because it was episode twenty. Where is it? I had this list. <laughs> I will help 29. you. Twenty-nine episode twenty-nine episode. What episode was that? Well, it wasn't a top ten because I wanted to hear it because I remember this so well. This is my first time. I was I didn't know what a podcast was. <laughs> Do what you, is this? Internet? Do you still know what a podcast? I'd what like is, to. Do you know what a podcast no, is? Yet? I don't know what we're doing. I swear. I think you. I thought we were just talking on the phone eighty five times. <laughs> I didn't know this was like. <laughs> and um, no, but I remember. I remember that I was. You know, as we <laughs> we little Timmy. This is way before celebrations. I think. Yeah. Yep. And this was Guide to the Magic, the book. Yeah. And I remember you said, "Hey, come on the show," and I was on my cell phone. <laughs> it wasn't even an iPhone. I think that's some flippy thing. I was so freaked out and nervous and I didn't know what to do. And I don't want to listen to it because I'm pretty sure I was like, we're the guide to the magic for kids. It's you were so cute and so on. nervous. And it was I, so I sweet. People will like it. And so I, w- I wanted to look that up because I, I remember that vividly, like doing that and being so nervous. And I, I was curious what number of show that was. So. Yeah, it was uh, it was very very cute. So your your first episode was that right? <laughs> episode twenty nine, and we also did an Epcot retro. Not you, but we did an Epcot retrospective right. about Journey, the full story of Journey into Imagination. But yeah. do you remember what episode? Well, you it doesn't matter because you're cheating. I'm what cheating. was what was? It was episode thirty eight. What was the very first top ten that we did together? <clears throat> oh wait. Um, spookiest top 10 spookiest moments moments. which it was funny because I was looking back at all the ones we (laughs) inadvertently doubled up on over but that's okay but uh, I I don't you know we didn't really sort of double up we sort of touched uh, on similar topics continued on right Um, I mean I I I want to listen to that because I don't remember but it was I I will tell you because you did as you let everybody know i'm not i'm just not a podcast person i'm too i'm too i'm too dad to do podcasts i, <laughs> don't, I don't understand i'm too much of a dad what okay i don't know what Dads that means either Becky. just let no it yeah sense. okay you uh, know your dad can't be on facebook because he's your dad you know so you're saying podcast you're not cool enough for podcasting so absolutely. says the person who just started his own, own podcast absolutely right? yeah <laughs> albeit having my own which is i will tell you lou i should have done this a lot of year earlier because who to thunk it it's a lot of fun yeah. but um go figure <laughs> becky no, Mankin, wait, where, where were we wait, going with this what did you well ask? so your your so your first appearance was on show 29 your next yeah. appearance and the first of what would be many many top tens yeah. was on show 38 Becky Mankin, yeah. on what episode did Becky Mankin first appear? Oh, <clears throat> so many years ago that it's hard to even put my <laughs> just say you don't on. know. Just say I, you don't know. I think it's in the fifties somewhere because somebody said that the other day, posted it that they had gone back to that episode. And it was fifty something. I think it was episode sixty three. Oh, it was episode sixty three. Okay, I'm wrong, but 63. somewhat close. Somewhat close, and you too. Right, so I remember we're sort of oh, introducing this, this idea. You were so cute. Oh, she yeah. was so we both, sweet so cute. and nervous, and we talked because about... Because I had no idea what you were going to set me up for. I At that point, I was just starting to get to know who you were. Um, I distinctly remember, though, that you came out of the woodwork and did a zinger somewhere on me and never, said something to me never. that took me off guard. <laughs> and I had this momentary lapse of... Should I just sing him back or should I just try to be professional? And I think there's an audible moment where I can you could actually hear my hesitation. And I was like, I, I, I there's a word that you would need make to go back and listen. You need I to go back and listen li- to it. because we all do. We've all matured somewhat uh, more in years than an actual Speak maturity over, yeah. <laughs> over the years. But we talked about like balloon rides and grand gatherings and the Disney wow. dining experience card, oh, AP wow. discounts and special events. So that goes back 
to show 63. And where was that in like 2000? That was, those were eons ago, my friend. That was 2008. Eight. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. Okay. So, but this week for show mm-hmm. 600, again, I, I really mm-hmm. kind of struggled with how do we sort of celebrate and, and commemorate this? Because I, I just, never wanted to be about yeah. me. I wanted to be about, you but know. It's kind of about you. It so, is not. Sorry. No, it's about, it's about <laughs> yeah. the show because I also want to, I, I've heard from you, I've heard from other people and folks uh, uh, on the live show and in the nation. But I also want to use this as an opportunity to revisit some moments, some fun and funny moments, and then maybe also turn people on to shows that maybe they missed along the past 15 years. Um, so I, I want to talk about some of our favorites, hopefully not just shows you were on, Becky, Mankin, and Tim. Some of the different types of shows. Now, I again, Tim has never listened to the show, which I get. I don't know what uh, you talk. <laughs> you have a show? Oh, by the way, you don't look a day over, you know, 500 don't. and say 42. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's all about you. Just told you. Yeah. So we listen, we've we've done a lot together. I'm sure some um, some stories of some things that we've recorded together, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as things that we have done together look there's no pressure but this really it's show 600 it's a milestone moment i'm trusting the two of you what was i thinking but that's okay we're gonna go in feeling good feeling positive and becky at becky this is your first top 10 sort of isn't it and and let's let's just take a moment to acknowledge the fact that you have me and Tim on the same show for the I'm very so first time in 600. <laughs> so. about, about, about time, I said. I'm yeah, so... I know. Why haven't we been doing right, this Right, Becky? More often? I Come know. on. We I, should have, we'll have our own show. And it's, then we, it's like he's been trying to keep us apart for something. Maybe we I should know. start comparing Maybe stories. I was saving you from a know. milestone show to bring you together to really celebrate it. What's he afraid of? I know. I, we'll find out in the next we little while. We'll find I'll out in the you. next yeah. hour. But. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I believe in ladies first. And look, I, I Tim, you'll be happy to know that in typical Lou top 10 fashion, not only did I not create any rules, but I'm not going to make any up as we begin. Usually Tim loves when oh, I now, preface. Now you're going to start this. Right. So I have great. none. 600. Right? You can talk about anything, any episode that you feel you enjoyed should be on the list. But these are top 10 shows, top 10 moments from 600 episodes and 500 years. I still believe my dad raised me right. Ladies first. Chivalry is not dead. So, Becky Mankin, please be our guest. Okay. I guess we're starting with number 10. My number 10 is your number one. (laughs) <laughs> let's, let's talk about that for a second. Can we not? It was, all of, it was all of like six minutes and 37 seconds or something of that that nature of you introducing your brand new podcast of Lou Mangiello from such podcasts as I think you named three or four others. But what I really enjoyed most about that first that first podcast is you spoke so much slower <laughs> than you do now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not slower. It's deliberately. I was being more deliberate oh, in my delivery. You were you were podcasting with purpose there, buddy, because <laughs> that was that was definitely you, you want to make fun of Tim and I being cute. Um, you were definitely. It was awful. Uh, it was rem- awful. Remarkable. It wasn't. It was awful. awful. It wasn't awful. It, it took was me definitely- like I'm not kidding. When I say it took me like six hours to record that, I'm not kidding. And it was only six and a half minutes. And I was very scripted Wait, and I w- it took you six hours to record six minutes. So let's just just again, by way of history, do, 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 <laughs> like do the dream sequence. So that was not my very first podcast, nor my first rodeo. As many of you know, I podcasted for about a little more than a year before I started WW Radio. I started podcasting. If you do well, it's actually more than that, because if you do the math, I've been podcasting since 2005. But. Episode one did not come out till 2007. Actually, February 11th, 2007 is technically WW Radio's birthday, anniversary, whatever you want to call it. So I had been doing Mouse Tunes with another host, who Nathan, 
who we started that in very early uh, 2005, like literally weeks after the podcast medium sort of was very much in its infancy. Like forget looking up on how to like what a podcast was, how to actually record and produce and distribute a podcast was a very interesting. Thank God Nathan and I were both very nerdy, are still very nerdy, technical computer geeks. Um, so we did that show for over a year. Um, and then, you know, sometimes in marriages, you may still love each other, but you grow apart for different reasons. And uh, the week before, on February 4th, 2007, Mouse Tunes recorded its final, somewhat tearful episode. And on February 11th, um, I just kept on going and episode one of WW Radio was born. For anybody that's listened and continued to listen, I'm sorry for that first episode and thank you. You got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. And and yeah, you could tell it's a little scripted, but it's <laughs> six and a half minutes or so of you at your um, most uh, scripted. <laughs> <laughs> So there's my number 10. Little Timmy Foster. I have a feeling your top 10 is going to include a lot of top 10s. Well, you, you told me I could do this. So. He told me I couldn't. So. <laughs> Here comes this the rules. What, all right. <clears throat> I'm, let me, let, you know, I'm going to do this because uh, I have a bunch. We'll talk about it. I'm going to make my, f- how do I do this craftily? I want to make my first top 10 entry. I don't even want to make it about a show. I want to make it about. What it's like. I want to tell everybody what oh, it's no. like <laughs> doing a show with Lou Mangiello. And I can see Becky cringing over there. She knows exactly I'm, I'm literally – there's. A look, I didn't know we could do that. I'm Tim, shaking. <clears throat> you don't. Well, all right. That's See, that's the best part. The, the great thing about doing a show with Lou Mangiello is there are clearly no rules. <laughs> so you can do whatever you want. So – so Becky have at it. And I know this because our little it's become a tradition anymore, like an expected thing that you will change, Lou. You will change the parameters, the rules, the guidelines, what's permitted, what's out of bounds for any top 10 that I do before we get on, which means of my meticulous 10 pages of notes, which you know I do. <laughs> <clears throat> which you know I do. Three of them are obsolete before you're even <laughs> done your intro speech. <laughs> and and I love that about you. It's like, we'll do, I, I, let me pick one. I, like we do top 10 spooky places like we talked about. And I will have listed, you know, the Haunted Mansion. and oh, That was a stretch. Oh, that, that was a tough one for you. I know it's a stretch, <laughs> but uh, but you'll start and you go, Walt Disney once said, I'm afraid to go trick or treat or whatever you'll start out with. But then you'll go through and you'll go. Now, for our list, I don't know what you said, little Timmy Foster, but I know what we did. I know for my list, I went into this thinking, we're not going to talk about the Haunted Mansion (laughs) and we're not going to talk about the Tower of Terror. We're going to go beyond and above. And now I feel stupid for what's your first run? Well, the Haunted Mansion is kind of scary, you know. So uh, <laughs> that's one of one of the great things I love working about you. You never know what to expect. That's the best part. I think you never know what's going to happen. Now that Becky's here, I never really, I don't really know what's going to happen, but I'm so looking forward to it. But that's why these funds are, uh, these shows are so much fun to do. And it's, Lewis, it's, it's so much fun working with you because it's, it's not scripted. It's not stuffy. This, this is, so we're sitting around a table talking and having fun, and we love what we're talking about. And, and to, to quote uh, uh, one of the greatest um, pieces of American literature and, and really filmmaking as, as well as stage production, um, the rules are there ain't no rules. And of course, you know, that comes from Greece, which for many reasons is near and dear to my little thespian heart. <laughs> so... <laughs> I want to hear more. Well, that's all you're going to get. Tell me more. Tell me more. Did he get very far? Never mind. I'm already going down a path. One rule you seem to have, though, which you will not break, except in very quick one half second spurts, is that you, at least for me, you do not sing. 
And you, you may do an impression once in a while, but James Mason. Yeah, that's the only we, one we ever hear. We need uh, to, hey, lady. Even then, I have to coax it out of him. Like, please give me. Like, he alludes to it in the whole show, and he won't do it. And I said, please Jerry. do it. And as we're going out, he goes, <laughs> and then right, and then he's gone. The people want to hear that. Well, forget the people. I want to hear this. Listen, we're going to put it my really bad Jerry Lewis. Him. Hey, lady. Like so hey, many. Lady. Times. Well, that yeah, and I can't you. That's a whole other story, how you ruined Spaceship Earth for me. But I've also done, I do a yeah. one heck of a great Becky Mankin impression if you want me to get the puppet you out. You do, so. <laughs> no. There's, there's nothing about that puppet that resembles me whatsoever. But Wait, we really need to hear puppets? you sing. Wait, there's puppets? Oh, oh Tim, yeah. Really? Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> Cle- I'm Clearly I'm Tim has never now. watched or seen anything I've ever done. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning that now. Uh, yeah. I'm, I thought you were joking, but now so now I, Becky, I get it. just so you know, oh, Tim, I, I, I have no excuse. Right, Becky's gonna go. Well, at least I listen. Tim doesn't even listen. So. <laughs> I got yes. stuff to do. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Let's get into uh, and so this. I'm not kidding. This was um, very, very. It, this was an impossible show for me to do because picking favorite episodes is like picking a favorite child it's like picking a favorite menu item at the boathouse um and because each one like i I do like i love them all individually yes some more than others for a variety of different reasons but you know i i knew sorry when i first started doing the show and i and i give this advice to other people who are looking to start a podcast is you do the show that you would want to listen to, right? Be directed not by what you think you're supposed to do, what's popular, what other people are doing. You do the show that you as a listener would want to do, and that's really where my ideas for the show come from, as well as from you, the listener, who oftentimes comes up with with fantastic, very, very creative show topic ideas as well. So, I, I do have a personal connection and affinity to all them because of they, they come from a personal place. Right? I just love talking about the stuff that makes us happy about going to, to Disney World, um, which, OK, so quick tangent and side story. I will tell you that 15 years later, right, WW Radio was probably not the best name I could have chosen. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, because right. so, all the time people have to walk up to you and say, "Radio." So, what station is that? Well, it, let's even go farther back. So, when I first started my website in 2004, it was DisneyWorldTrivia.com because I had written my Walt Disney World trivia books, which I really thought was going to be the end game. Like it, it was really just a personal challenge I set out for myself. Can I write a book? Can I get it published? I've told the story before about that journey. So, I thought. Disney World Trivia is exactly who I am. It's what I do. It's what I what I thought the book was about. And then when I started podcasting in 2005, so the original show name was Mouse Tunes, which I never really loved, but Nathan was like, oh, iTunes, Mouse Tunes, it makes sense. That's where you found podcasts. But still in 2007, actually still in 2020, not everybody knows what a podcast is, where to find it. So I said, look, I need to be very intentional and deliberate in my name. And so I chose radio because it instantly conveys that I'm doing spoken word. I talk about Walt Disney World primarily, although, again, we've expanded so much over the years. And WDW Radio does not necessarily flow off the tongue very easily, but it's the name. It is what it is. And I still love it dearly, Um, although it's weird going to an event and I have a video camera or I'm live and they're like, radio but you've got video i know i know it's a long story and and nobody really wants or needs to hear it so that's the genesis of the name i completely went on a a tangent there but in terms of one of in no particular order of my top 10 episodes i tried to pick out some that were some of my favorites or, or maybe they were milestones for me because of what the show represented so and I'm going to pull an absolute Lou here because after 600 episodes, I think I can. I'm going to my one is going to be a, a, a little bit of a an amalgam of of multiple because going in order, 
I look back to some of my firsts along the way. And so, for example, show number five was really sort of like my first, quote unquote, big interview. And what I mean by that is the first time I had somebody from the Disney company, actually a Disney legend, come on to the show. And it was somebody who I um, had actually (laughs) I had actually spoken to when I was first starting out researching my trivia book and wanting to get access to either media events or just help from Disney because he was leading PR at the time. And he's Disney legend Charles Ridgway. As fate would have it, um, after I started doing the show, he had left the company by then. He came on the show. I, I tracked him down in a non-stalkery kind of way. He came on the show and was my first real interview. And over time, we became good friends. He became a Disney legend. He also wrote a book, Spinning Disney's Way. And he actually, I introduced him to my publisher. So we shared a publisher. So we had a lot of of social interaction beyond just the show as well. So Disney legend Charles Ridgway back on show number five in 2007, I have to include as one of my top 10. Look, I won't even break my own rule. I'll just stick to that one. I'll include it as one of my top 10s <laughs> because it was for me a milestone because <clears throat> not that I hadn't interviewed people before, but it was the first time I had an interview for the show and somebody who I think was probably the first. Well, yeah, I think I interviewed Maybe I might have done a Disney legend on. Um, yeah, because I interviewed Ralph Kent on Mouse Tunes um, back in 2005, but sort of the first Disney legend, somebody I would end up becoming friends with for years and he would make multiple appearances on the show. I will throw in uh, Disney legend Charles Ridgway at show number five as the first of my top ten. Becky, you. Charles Ridgway was the head of yes. publicity and PR yes. for Disneyland and Walt Disney yes. World. Um, Tim I, Foster, I, Disneyland I is another park that exists out in California. It's a lot like Disney World, but <laughs> what's, slightly different. Wait, <clears throat> what's uh, Califor- California? What's California? <sighs> Becky, what's your, what is your next on the top my 10 next, list? My next one. Um, all right. Because I love to hear the stories of Disney World that people don't know, right? So... Number nine for me was something, one of the very first ones that I actually did listen to was the one with Mary Ping about the uh, the Beatles breakup. Okay, Mary Ping. I, I had, May, not Mary, May. I had, um, I didn't know that story. I had no clue that he signed the paperwork at the Polynesian. So that was one of the ones that I thought was really intriguing and interesting because it was the melting of, of my love for music and my love for Disney. And um, having that little piece of information that all that all went down there was very cool and very intriguing. So that piece of the story and, and hearing it from her uh, was really cool for me. So that's my let me just let me just help nine. out here. So Tim, the Beatles was a um, a very popular <laughs> band in the 1960s. John Lennon was a principal of that band. Um, and so on Beatles show number like 103, bugs? show 103, 103, I interviewed. May Pang, who at the time that the Beatles broke up at the Polynesian, that's where John Lennon signed the papers, um, they were they were boyfriend, girlfriend. And she came on and talked all about that, um, the entire sort of relationship she had with John and how it all happened at the Polynesian roads that they attractions that they rode. And yeah, one of the things that I really loved was when she said, and I please correct me if I'm wrong, but it was something to the effect that. John Lennon knew that everybody was having a good time because uh, they weren't recognizing him. They weren't stopping him and and pulling him aside. So I, I thought that was pretty fascinating. Yeah. We also, I, this is also way back when, when I did multiple segments on a show too. And we also did a show about going to Walt Disney World with special needs back on show 103. Oh, so, so that must mm-hmm. have been around the time that, that the book came out. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Timmy Foster, what is your next top 10 in your top 10? Top 10s. Uh, I, I can't follow that. No, I, I will I will tell you, that's one of my... <laughs> I will listen to that show. <laughs> now, I'm a lot... Yes, one I... more download. Yes, <laughs> count that number. Somebody write that number down and get one more download on the Mate Pang episode. Now, I'm all about the numbers, Tim. Every download counts. If I, 
if I, I'll tell my mother, if I'm a, if I'm a bigger fan of anything than Disney, it is the Beatles. So that I, when I knew you were doing that, I was, I like, I couldn't talk to you. I, you, you're like, you, you talk to this person who knows John Lennon like oh my god six degrees so, of separation from from six John Lennon degrees nothing so uh <laughs> three degrees <laughs> two, yeah so no that was that was I, I I the whole story about him being a Disney I always find fascinating and that was right there I did a I don't think we ever did one but I I did in celebrations mm-hmm. I did a little top five ten Beatles Disney connections that being one of them but there's some but I digress but that that's why I love you were <laughs> You talked to May Pay. Oh my god, that was so <laughs> so amazing. Um, now as I go to <laughs> selfishly kind of talk about me, see, I, feel, I feel so bad doing this, but I guess Don't, it's this my is own all fault. about you. Go ahead, it's it is fine. all about me. So now, well, actually, one thing. Um, there were a few shows that we did that uh, I'll, I'll talk about now, and they were all very special because they all re- they revolved around. Uh, the same kind of thing. This were these were. Um, I don't know if you want to give me give episode numbers out. Uh, for example, episode four ninety four, we talked about ten sentimental corny things that we love. Uh, Five fourteen, we did our top ten emotional experiences. Um, those shows, I I really really loved because that that let us get. I mean, it's one thing to talk about the scariest things and, you know, places to have a snack and all that kind of stuff. But talking about these shows was really it was really great because you and I got to talk about what was at the heart of why we were doing this in the first place. Like what it was that we loved about Disney that brought us to this spot, which we know, uh, you know, but all of your audience, they feel the same way. And that's what makes Disney different from so many other places. But those shows are very special to me when I did those because it was a it was as a way to reach down and deep connect with Disney. But best of all, to share it with my pal. Like it's not just me talking about it. Like you know, we could connect about them. And there were some other emotional ones. I'm saving for another entry. But I always loved those where we talked about uh, the sentimental things, the emotional things. And I think we did a couple sentimental shows actually. I think there's another one floating in there somewhere. But but I always loved those shows when we talked about the the emotional pay dirt of wh- why we go there and what what it's all about because that's what it comes down to what this is all about. So. Timmy Foster, if you were sitting right here, I don't care. I would run over and give you a big, warm Lou Mangello hug because you are so. Bring very it much- in, brother. Come, come on, man. Listen. Yep. Um, those the, the, the bromance is getting a little the look on Becky's face right I'm now. Just is wondering how long it's going to be before I start to audibly weep on this show because oh, I got one that's going to get you. Oy, but I, dude, I, this was very much on my list. Four ninety four was was the emotional experiences, and five fourteen was the top ten corny and sentimental yep. and nostalgic. And we just sort of let it fly, like we did not hold anything back in terms of sharing our the the things that that gave us all the feels right and and I love that because especially over time going back to your very first top 10 to now you know you there's a trust right there's a trust and a relationship I feel happens with a podcast and a listener because it is such an intimate medium you are literally in people's ears and we are we are creatures of habit right we become part of their routine and and there's this there's this trust i think that goes back and forth between the the listener and us and when the the more i think that you show and express that that validation of that trust by maybe opening up your heart a little bit maybe letting a tear flow I think for a listener that helps to establish it, and I think that's what those do. I think it shows that we do this because we just genuinely love this place and the way it makes us feel. And I think when you do that, they might not necessarily agree with the moments per se, 
but they agree with the sentiments because that's why we go. That's why we go back. That's why there's podcasts and magazines and books and travel agents and all these things about these places, about Disney World and cruises and land because of the way that they make us feel. So emotional experiences, corny, sentimental, nostalgic, and all the other emotional stuff that we've done, super, super, super high on my list. It's all about the feels. It is all about the feels. As we say. As the kids say. <laughs> so, um, so you know what? I, I'm going to – I will somewhat piggyback off that. And, and what I did was I sort of went through my list and was starting to extract some of the ones that were my favorites for different reasons. And this was a, a very interesting exercise and journey for me because I remember, like, my first interview – you always remember your first time, right? I remember my first – Wayback Machine and and Best of the Best and Epcot Retrospectives and the Seven Wonders of Walt Disney World and talking to somebody like, you know, Imagineer George McGinnis on show 27 and then like on show 62, like interviewing Samantha Brown, who, hello, crush, like from, um, you know, watching her from Travel Channel. But I will tell Meeting you- her in person. And meeting her parents. That's a that's a story. I'll it was well. With. I met her in person a, a couple of times, actually. Yeah, but the one when we met her in person, and you were about ready to go on. We were on the cruise. We were on the which which one was it? Was it the fantasy when it first the inauguration? One or the other. But you were getting ready to go down a slide or something, and Samantha Brown had just done her her oh, shoot, yeah, 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 and yeah. you were standing there like a. <laughs> <laughs> like you a respectful were, person waiting for her to finish an, her craft. You were an Uber fan that just wanted to say hi to Samantha Brown. And I remember her looking at you and remembering your name without you even telling her who you were. And she looked at you and just went, Oh, Lou, I remember you. I remember talking to you. And you turned like 42 shades of red. Aww. Like I am and right now. You were <laughs> grinning from ear to ear. And it, that was such a wonderful moment. I, I have She's to She's the I wish sweetest I she person really in the whole world. Yeah. Um, he, he was so laser focused on her. He didn't even introduce me to her. I was just oh like God. standing there. Like, oh, you know. <laughs> Notice that <laughs> no. Becky makes it all. This is something else. Top 10 moments that become all about Becky. So, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I remember. Was... Actually, I remember seeing her in um, in Magic Kingdom. Um, she, I don't, I think she was just there on vacation with her husband who I had actually, I knew her husband from different non Disney events, um, speaking events that I would go at, um, some, some travel conferences and some social media marketing conferences. I got to know her husband, but I was in magic kingdom approaching the hub and it was not long after my 102 ways came out, and I only know it because I used to carry a copy with me all the time. And as I'm walking to the hub, she came and said hello to me. And I I can't even tell you who else I was with because everything – it was like a dream <laughs> sequence. Like there was just this bright light around her, and all I heard was her, and she was very sweet and very gracious. You and, were crushing. You, you were a crush, crushing guy. I did. Over, she took a picture with Samantha the book. I'll have to find that picture. And she took a picture like with me and the book, and I gave her a copy. And she is. She's just the sweetest – nicest person um, in the whole wide world and we'll talk so about I took it. you on a tangent Sorry we'll talk about, about that, friendships and relationships after that but I will give you the first of what may be multiple top tens because this too was a, a bit of a leap of faith and like this episode like again being transparent you don't always know how people are going to react and respond and this is one that I was like I'm going to just sort of go with my gut. I'm not sure if anybody's even going to get this, but I'm going to do it. And I was, I'll admit now, I was petrified. I'm like, this is where I lose all three listeners because nobody is going to listen to show 75, which was the top 10 smells of Walt Disney World. Oh my God, that's on my list. (laughs) You just took one off my list too. (laughs) But see, that's it. Right. So it's on your list because we can all instantly relate to that. I'm like, nobody's going to understand. And I remember I deliberately used the word, the musty water smell. I'm like, nobody's going to get what I'm talking about. Like, Lou, you're a weirdo, man. Nobody's riding pirates. So underestimate the rest of us. And thinking. But remember, Becky, this was, you know, 2005, 2006. It was all still very new. I'm like, 
who's going to understand what I mean by the musty water smell? And you did, and you do. And still to this day, because of the way podcasting works, people might find the show at show 599 and they go back, God bless you, and you listen to all of them. Oi, that's a lot of Lou. But they'll go back and go, I just listened to top 10 smells and I totally get it because this is the smell that resonates with me or they'll share a personal story because our olfactory senses are the ones that are most closely associated with memories. So obviously I didn't know that at the time. I just sort of, I got lucky, but when you think about certain smells, they instantly can connect you to a place or a person or a time or Or a a sentiment or a what? A scotch. <laughs> a scotch. I wasn't sure Rome, if you said a touch Rome, or a scotch. You know, Rome burning is is a very peaty scotch. So if you want to, if you're sitting in your house and you want to return to uh, spacious Earth, all you have to do is get out a really peaty scotch and smell it, and it's Rome burning. I see Rome burning to me as the Whispering Canyon. So, but see, we all have the, that bar- thing. the barbecue. <laughs> But it was it, it was it was a it was one that I was hesitant and somewhat fearful that people just weren't going to quote unquote get it. Now I understand we are all like minded, like hearted, and you know we get Tim. We might actually have to go. We've never really repeated a topic, but that might be one that we need to revisit because there are so many new smells and places and opportunities that did not exist back then. Yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because I, I absolutely had that on my list. I feel like that's that's in the the top 10 Mount Rushmore Hall of Fame, <laughs> that one. And But I, what I remember oddly about it, and I probably remember it all wrong, but this was what – I mean, Lou, you know I, I look up to you and I idolize you and I wish I could be just a tenth of you know what you are. But this this show is like, man, you got it because I, I – my recollection is – I don't know how accurate this is. I went into the show thinking – the uh, deliberate sense that are in the attractions, like in Journey into Imagination, Feel Her Magic. Like I went down that path, and that's all. That's where my mind was. And then you came in with musty water smell and the monorail, <laughs> and and in my and I'm going, oh my god, you nailed it. That's that's what this is about. And I'm going like <laughs> apple pie and Phil Her Magic, which which is great. And there's so many of those I like, but. But it, I was I was that person in the audience when you were saying those things because I, for some reason, my little brain didn't really go there. And when you said them in my head, I'm going, yes, yes, the water. So what? Of course. And I was just, oh, my God, that's so great. So that's why that's one of my favorites, too, because that you hit me on a <laughs> on a on a whole other level with that, because I, I was I was thinking. But yeah, a part two is definitely. Yeah, I yeah we'll have to come back to, can, to top 10 smell spells. What you're putting down there. <laughs> All right, Becky, we're back to you. So hopefully while Tim and I were just talking about that, you had time to go back and, and listen to another episode. So what what is next on your list? Yeah, actually, I have to reshuffle mine because top 10 was my number seven. So now I'm kind of moving things around. So next one on my list is, believe it or not, and I'm going to break your stupid rule because <laughs> I... <laughs> I'm, I'm going to throw out there the ones that I've really enjoyed um, the DSIs hmm. for me. So I can almost say any DSI, but there's one in particular that I really, really like. It's because I never, ever, 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 ever want to ride the ride ever, ever, ever again. <laughs> and that's the extra extraterrestrial alien encounter uh, because I went on it one time Um And that was good enough for me. So if I want to kind of relive the terror without having to relive the terror, I can listen to that show. And it reminds me of being held down in a chair at no with being helpless, not being able to get out. And then something breathing on the back of my neck and then something licking the back of my neck and poor little, (laughs) little skippy that gets burned to a crisp. All those things that I hate about that attraction i can at least hear it Uh, the other thing that i do enjoy about those two is that you talk about some attractions that i never got a chance to uh to experience when you go back in the way back machines but to the dsis in particular so and like you tim from the last one you were just talking about i didn't know the rules for this so i probably would have came at it a different way 
if if I, I like came out, Lou tells me, make sure he even emailed me and said, make sure it's not the ones that you're in. So I'm no, like, I just okay, said, don't I'm make take every this. single one, you know, <laughs> my episode where I was on email, the other episode where I was on email. I wanted to sort of mix things that, up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. So but of course, I took that to heart and I thought, you know what, I'm going to come up with the ones that I really enjoyed listening to and what has kept me around for 13, 13 years. <laughs> A long time. Anyway, so that would be my answer. The But the extraterrestrial one is the highlight of the DSIs. All right, Timmy Foster, what's next? Is there a more divisive attraction than Alien Encounter? Because I loved Alien Encounter. Stitches, oh, super I think you, you either loved it or you hated it. You know. <laughs> well, if you're claustrophobic, afraid of the dark and hate dinosaurs, that is not a place you want to find yourself strapped into a chair in that you can't get out no matter what you want to do. But the, 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 the Skippy, the alien, it's like the cilantro of Disney attractions. No, it's the licorice. Of Disney <laughs> licorice. No, don't you go talk about my Red black licorice versus, that way. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, you're either in or you're out. But, uh. I'm in. <laughs> Wait, so let me get this straight. So you you got a specific mandate not to talk about shows you were on and i got gracious permission to only talk about shows now see this is why he doesn't let us do anything together tim because then we can because compare tim, notes. now we're comparing I, and then notes. we discover the madness of this man that we've been dealing tim, with i've years. known you for a long time and yeah. i would have bet the farm that you had never listened to any other episode then why so, were I you so, you so i was giving why you grace so i was giving you grace no but it's out of love i know it is <laughs> No, actually, right, so is that what that is? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You guys both um, know that the amount of grief that I give you I is give directly you proportionate to how much I love you. So, stop loving me so much. <laughs> if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. I don't. <laughs> sing it, Lou. Uh, no, he won't sing it. That's the problem. He won't. Sing it. Um, You've lost go. that loving feeling. <laughs> Oh, that loving feeling. Wait, see, I just want to let you now know. Now it's gone. Cause... Long ah, gone. Yeah, gone. Whoa, gone. whoa. Gone. See, there's a difference between singing and uh, em- uh, baby, baby, narrating. I get down on my knees word, for you. Word, Stop it. Word. Just I have to pay. <laughs> I have to pay royalties every time you sing something. So all right. So that's Becky singing. Move on. So if Lewis sing Moving that show, on, be... Timmy Foster. Grease is the word, is the word, is the word. These no, words, meaning. Spoken. it's the time, it's the place, it's the... That, see? Right there. You know Look. you want it. You're just like, you're that close from Grease breaking is the, the way we are feeling. I'm just letting him go, because he'll slip and he'll just... I am, I am going to slip. Tim, what's next on your list? <laughs> um... Well, I, have, I do have I do have some fun ones, but I, I do have one more emotional one. And I, I, I want to get here because this this to me, I have a feeling this was a very uh, personal one for you, too. But it was for me as well. There's actually two shows involved here. I'm going to leave with the one that was this on of itself doesn't seem like it would be in a top 10. But show 459. Show 459, you say we did top 10 things we loved mm-hmm. about the Japan Pavilion. Okay. What about France? What about the United Kingdom? You say, well, for me, Japan is especially uh, special because that to me, that's my daughter's and mine. That's our place for a lot of reasons that we talked about. So that was a, for me personally, that was um, uh, probably an emotional show at times because that means a lot to me. That's like my special place, which reminded me, of the really the, the big show I'm getting to, which was 175, which was a Father's Day episode when we talked about, uh, you know, top ten things we do with with our family or with our dad or with your child being the dad. Um, and obviously for both of us, that was that was a very uh, a personal show, an emotional show for both of us. And if, at, for those reasons, not just for my own end, but I know how much it meant to you in this. So that was always a very, very special show that we did just above and beyond just talking about goofy stuff at Disney. This again, this was talking about the real emotional hater and those connections that we make with our family and our friends 
through Disney and the Disney magic. And let's just, let's just share all these moments. And we got to talk about that and reminisce about it. And I just will always remember that show. That's See, now you're making me think about it. And my dad, which is how yeah. this all got started. So now you're really going to make me cry. I'm sorry. And I, and I knew that. And I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't mean to be a wise guy and do that, but yeah, no, it it's was all right. a very special show. You know, he, he's books. been crying a lot lately. So yeah, it's kind of, you it's are not the first to pass this. You, know, so, yeah. you are not the first to pass this way, nor shall you be the last. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we, 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 it was around Father's. I remember it was around Father's Day. Yeah. And it was. And, and Tim, I, and the Japan one was actually on my list, too. Not only really? one, because I love Japan and I love yeah. every episode we do together. But I do remember that. I remember sort of talking about the personal feelings and, and you going with your daughter and that same type of thing. It's not about the places that we go. It's about the people that we go with. So a lot of times that helps to craft um those memories um you know in looking through the list um again i'm going to sort of get a little tangential here and there and i'm sure this is not a, a, a i don't mean to to steal anybody's because for me and look again when i speak at, at conferences and to businesses and individuals um, i say this all the time spoiler you get it for free because that's what it's worth but I think that no matter what business you are in, you are in the relationship business. And this show for me has been less about Disney and more about relationships. And it's relationships between me and you, listener, and me and you guys, Tim and Becky, and me and the people that are my friends and everybody who listens really is a friend, whether we've met yet or not. Um, I can talk about relationships and, and completely separately, but... It is about people like the show is about people. And if you know, I've never I've literally never monologued yet. I've never monologued a show. I've always had somebody come on. And again, I do this show as a fan first. I do a show that I would love to listen to as a fan. And, and I'm always motivated by my personal love of the brand and the people and the fans. And, and along the way, I've had incredible opportunity to meet people, interview people, visit their homes, become friends with them, cruise with them, you know, have dinner with them. Uh, and it's, again, like I, I'm so hesitant to do this because I never want it to be about sounding like I'm, I'm name dropping or anything else. But it, again, I do these interviews for myself so that I can share them with you. And in looking, you know, sort of, again, I'm, I've been looking down this list in in chronological order as I sort of take us back on this 600-episode journey. I, I have to sort of sneak in a, a bit of a twofer because if you ask me, and I get this question all the time, either favorite interview, person that you've met, impactful moments, um, you know, top – keeping present company out of this conversation, obviously, Becky and Tim – but two of the people that have been so impactful for me for a couple of different reasons happened not too far from each other on show 80 and then on show 127. And show 80 was the first time I interviewed Richard Sherman and show 127 was when I interviewed Julie Andrews. And each one has huge meaning for me for different reasons. I will tell you very quickly the story. So again, show 80. Um, so in this, again, we're talking probably if my math is correct, somewhere in 2006, this is pre like the internet being what it is now. It's certainly pre D 23 D 23 expo destination D Disney plus um, all these different things. And a lot of the people that I wanted to talk to were not necessarily quote unquote, the faces. Like there was no way you had a chance to either hear them, maybe even know their names and being a fan. And here's sort of the connective tissue being a fan of Mary Poppins, as I am probably my overall favorite live action Disney movie and loving the theme parks as I did. And I always wanted to, to dig into the people who helped create the magic, right? So again, like George McGinnis on show 27, you might not have known the name, but when you hear his interview and you hear, you know, Horizons and Space Mountain, all of a sudden 
it connects you. Well, Richard Sherman at the time might not have been a name that was was very, very well known, but I very much appreciated what he did on screen and in the theme parks. And again, it's 2006, so I couldn't go on LinkedIn and try and find his agent or however, or go to the PR department at the studio. So I did it the old fashioned way. Like, you know, I won't go through everything I did, but I did. I sort of looked him up and I found him and very, very sheepishly and nervously and literally like wrote out the like the things I was going to say to him if I got him on the phone. Um, I, I found a phone number for him, which I thought was he actually had a, a, a small studio um, whose name is unimportant. Right? He had a small studio. So I thought that I was calling his his business number. And I ended up finding his home phone number and I called and his lovely wife, who I could now call a friend, answered the phone. And instead of slamming it down on me, we spoke for like 45 minutes. And not long thereafter, I get a phone call from a California number and this wonderful, kindly, gentlemanly old man calls me and it's Richard Sherman and I'm freaking out and I will never forget. (laughs) I explained to him like what I wanted to do and who I was and what it was going to be for. And there was this genuine like surprise and he, and I'm paraphrasing, but he basically said, he goes, are you sure you want to interview me? And I'm like, dude, you're Richard Sherman, man. Like, (laughs) come on, man. Um, And I remember like talking to him and then speaking with him like, For a long time, even after we were done, um, you know, after I clicked the record, I wish I would have kept it just for myself. But we spoke for a long time after the interview. Uh, And I loved it because I I admired his work so much. And I wanted his story to be out to as many people as possible. And it was funny because when you tell people, oh, I interviewed Richard Sherman, there wasn't always an instant like, oh, I know who you're talking about. But again, because I'm quickly tying these stories together. The first time I had somebody that I think like my mom would know people in the non Disney space was, was when I interviewed Julie Andrews and that was on show 127. Again, fan first. I just love Mary Poppins and I will never forget. I was living in South Florida at the time. I found a way to connect with her. I was told I would have no more than 15 minutes. Like that was it. Um, an hour and a half later of, of, of talking to Julianne, but I remember I cleared my house. I got rid of everybody in my house. I had not one, not two, but three recording devices going at the same time. And I had my questions. And, and when we were done, like she stayed and we just chatted for a little while. And I, you know, the fanboy in me said, oh, Miss Andrews, Dame Julie, your majesty, Mary Poppins. I, I just thank you so much. And as somebody who grew up on the film and was now sharing it with his kids. And I was getting like all choked up and she goes, Ooh, Lou. And I'm like, inside I'm bursting. I'm like, Mary Poppins just said my name. Like I could not believe it. And you know, it for me was so, it was so special because I, I had loved her work for so much. And then I could go to my mom and did go to my mom and dad. And I'm like, I just spoke to Julie Andrews and they knew exactly who it was that I was talking about. Not that I needed the validation, but I was just so elated and ecstatic until to this day, like it was an honor to be able to to talk with her and share and it you with can, you. And you can hear that in the interview. And I will say 127 Julie Andrews was on my list because I think it's the very first time I've ever heard you call somebody Ms. Andrews or Ms. <laughs> or Mr. Anything uh, on the show. But you can hear your elation. It is coming through. It You sound like... Um, y- it sounds like you meeting Spider-Man. <laughs> you I'll get to so, that story too. <laughs> yeah, you were so excited about interviewing her and it comes through and your passion comes through. And I could listen to her voice all day. Um, she is such a, an amazing talent. And she just kind of opened up to you and started talking with stories that things that you weren't even asking. And she was elaborating on it. And it, it was a really cool interview. And it definitely was one of my favorites. But this is also where your ability to tease started driving me crazy because (laughs) you sent me a text 
that morning and you said, I'm interviewing somebody that I'm really excited about. And I'm like, who? He went, I'll tell you later. And then oh. that's seriously. So <laughs> I was like, OK, no, tell me who this sounds fun. No, you'll you'll see. So later on, I, th- I guess after you were done, I got another text. It was such a great interview and I'm so happy type <laughs> thing. I'm just paraphrasing, but that's what it was. But you did not tell me who it was and you would not tell me who it was. And I think that's when you discovered that that drives me crazy. <laughs> And he immediately stopped, right? Yes, and he wouldn't get <laughs> no. more texts. So uh, I think. No, I mean, stop teasing you. No, 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 no. Right, I, I think no, again, no. that was the beginning, and there clearly is no end. So yeah, I had to now, wait what? until it came out, and I was like, oh, now I know who you were talking about every time you were texting me all day long. Lou, were you deliberately teasing Becky? Because that's not nice. <laughs> I'm gonna call you out on the card. It wasn't. Happened. It was a tease in terms of like a teaser trailer. Like you want to get people excited for what's coming. No, I'm not. I'm not he's, buying. He's it. trying. Yeah, I'm, he's, I'm he's trying. Him, just wait till you hear what I have planned for our next top ten. See, that's an example of it. <laughs> and that, and that, I'm not gonna sleep now for a week. <laughs> really? It's something unlike we've know. ever done before, and it's going Tim. to blow you away. I got to do homework. <laughs> Tim, don't no. feel bad. Right now, he's yeah. sitting in his studio and he's looking at a whiteboard that I know exists because I've seen it. And at one point, I oh, should dear. have taken a picture of it, and I did not. And he knows that I am driving myself crazy because I did not take a picture of the whiteboard. And there are things on it that I should know, but he doesn't want to tell me because Lou Mangello. Huh. Moving uh, on. You know- uh, Lou has his video on. I can think I can see it in. His- <gasps> You're looking the wrong way. That's yeah. It's, Wait, it's- let me get that CSI. Enhance that picture and blow it up. A it's called a DSI, not a CSI. <laughs> no, not your thing. The other. The other thing. Well, it's not my turn. Wait, can I? I just put it real, real quick before Becky. I remember the Richard Sherman thing or show. I, I was going to point out. I think we talked about this on one of your. Uh, an, an earlier anniversary. You have so many anniversaries, Lou. We all love you. That's why it's, this is great. But I remember when you were, we were in Disney. I believe we were in Spoodles, actually, with uh, everybody. We were all hanging out together. And I remember you saying, you, you, I think you were going to interview him, but you, you knew. And you were, you were telling everybody, and you were just so, you were that little kid. You were just so excited. <laughs> And I and I could see, it. but that that to me kind of spoke to um, again that the the how do I say this? Not the why we're doing it, but but that what we're talking about Disney. Like one of the one of the things we love about it so much is it's not just the park and whatever. Like there's so much history and there's so much so many layers to the onion, which I think I counted. You said like 167 <laughs> times in our top tens, but. Um, but that was the thing. Like I, I, I knew who you're. Obviously, knew I knew who you're talking about, and I was floored. I was like, Richard Sherman, really? And um, uh, but it was just great because it's not. It's you're just not talking about, uh, you know, Big Thunder Mountain or roller coaster. This, this is a historical person. Maybe not everybody knows, but it's a big deal. And I thought it, you know, it was great. But um, just, but just <laughs> you were just so giddy running around. Like, guess what I got? Guess what I got? You know. <laughs> and I'm probably exaggerating what you did, but that's uh, no. but for for lack of uh, Instagram videos and Facebook lives and all that back then, I can stick with the version that I remember. And and listen, giddy is the right word because wrong. you know what, Tim? The day that I stop getting giddy about what I'm doing yep. is the day I need to stop doing it. That's so right. that, this that stuff still gets me giddy. For a long time. I did not. Thinking. I will tell you this. I never woke up as a lawyer giddy about going to court <laughs> and giddy about reviewing contracts and giddy about drafting complaints. And so, yeah, I, uh, I will stay giddy as long as I possibly can. It's the only way to be Becky Mankin. Becky. I think it's Look at how giddy Becky is. Becky's She's just turn. oozing. Yay! giddy. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm wondering what's going to, I'm going to get hit with next um, at any <clears throat> given time. And I'm still wondering what the heck is on the whiteboard. Hmm. So my next one, uh, speaking of Richard Sherman, does go to one that, yeah, sorry, I was part of. So I am breaking that rule, but, you know, there it goes. It was the Richard Sherman cruise recap, number 300. Mm -hmm. 
And for me, this that was back in November of 2012. So eight-ish years ago uh, that we actually took this cruise. And it was by far the largest cruise we have ever done with the, the number of people considering the special guest. And I, I think I love the recaps um, a, a lot because you have the the viewpoints of the people who attended these events where you and I are running around like chickens with our heads cut off when we do these cruises and we're trying to take care of everybody and take care of the events and the details and enjoying what we can, but we do miss out on a lot of the things that are going on during the event. So to have those recaps, to sit down, to uh, remember all of the details, to go through it day by day so that uh, you have a chance to, to hear it from somebody else's viewpoint and the things that went great, the things that maybe didn't go so great, the uh, getting that raw feedback from, from people around the table, um, and then just to relive those memories, because that was such a special cruise. We had that opportunity to uh, do the pre-stay um, with Richard and his wonderful uh, wife, Elizabeth, and where we had dinner with them beforehand. And than to be on the cruise for the, with them for four days where they were with us basically every single day for four days. And uh, the, the, the private concert that he gave us and the, the guests that were with us, um, that type of show, <clears throat> because when, once you're eight years removed, you sometimes forget a lot of the teeny little details that really made it magical. So you can go back and listen to it and relive it all over again those group cruises are just so special to me that uh, it's, it's an amazing thing to go back and listen. I don't, I haven't forgotten one thing about that because <laughs> I knew, look, that was a special cruise for a lot of different reasons. It was, it was our biggest group. We had 500 plus people on the Disney dream. Richard Sherman was our special guest and you're right, Becky. I remember and I say we, we talk about these things not like, wow, look what we got to do with them. But as fans, we want to share with other people, yeah. which is why we want them to be on there. And I will never forget. There's a couple of things that I remember about that cruise. Um, one was going to the empty Walt Disney Theater and standing on the stage where so many incredible productions are performed and standing on that that stage with just it was just maybe three or four of us there and there was a piano and Richard Sherman practicing and I looked at you guys and I'm like yeah. oh, wow. do you know do you understand <laughs> what we are experiencing like right this very moment like we're watching a, a legend like forget Disney legend just you know a musical and it was just a, a surreal special moment and I was actually talking to my kids about this this morning because they too, even though it was eight years ago and they were much younger, they too remember. And they remember because I told my daughter at one point, you better remember this moment for the rest of your life because it was in November. It was about a week before her birthday. But, you know, she was eight. So we needed to sort of celebrate it in advance. And as a surprise, we went like even now saying this out loud, like I still get giddy. Like we went to Richard Sherman's stateroom and... We had like a little like mini birthday party, and Becky, I know you remember there was a there was a bunch of us in there, and at one point, my daughter is sitting on Richard. She's showing the picture of us standing around the piano as he's rehearsing. But we send that to me. I don't even think I have that one. Um, I've got a, a ton of them. Oh wait, right, let me see that again. So, where Richard Sherman has my daughter on oh. his lap talking to her. Nice. I'm getting. I'm gonna get choked up. On his lap talking to her, and there's a few other kids there because he was such – he is such a grandfatherly gentleman, and gentleman is the right word, and his wife is just so wonderful and warm and elegant. And Richard Sherman sang my daughter happy birthday. There was not a dry eye in the house, and I'll never forget hugging my daughter and whispering in her little ear, you better remember this moment for the rest of your life. <laughs> and I still go, yeah. you better remember that moment for the rest of your life. And – to illustrate the point, again, this is not about me. Like, please don't think, but 
Richard and his wife sat at our table at, at dinner and everybody in, in our group was so incredibly respectful of him and his and his time and, and his, his, you know, having dinner. And one night we're having dinner and he and his wife get up and they come over to me and say, hey, I don't know why I get, I don't know why I cry about it. He said, would it be okay if we took your kids to the show? And I'm like, oh, no, no, that's okay. Like, I'll just finish up. We'll go. They're like, no, no, no. We want to take them. You guys, we don't want you to come. Like, you guys stay <laughs> Sorry, here. Lou. Mind you, super overprotective dad. Like, I, you know, I did, like, fingerprinted my parents before I allowed them to babysit my kids. But, and I'm like, okay. And I have this vision of watching them walk out of animator's palette, holding my kids' hands, like yep. taking them to the show. And I'm like, my kids just went with Richard Sherman to go sh- see a show where some of his music is probably going to be performed. Yeah. Mic drop. I'm, <laughs> That's, I'm, I'm, wow. I'm, that was I'm amazing. To, it was. <laughs> this is why I don't amazing. do video. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you still get punched in the heart over that because it really was special. And yeah, I remember when, when they asked you that at the table and, walked off with your kids and that's just the people that they are. I mean, when we, when we had dinner with them beforehand and it was just me, you, Deanna and, and Richard and Elizabeth, we spent six hours with them at dinner. And you remember when we walked away from them afterwards, we said, goodnight, we were going to be on our way to the cruise the next day. I turned around. We, we, you and I and Deanna walked towards the front to go get our cars. They were staying at the Grand Floridian. So we went to d- different directions and I turned around and looked at them and they're holding hands. Yeah. Just quietly walking together. Uh, and you can tell that they are such genuine people and so in love and so connected and so um, humble. Like so humble. So yeah. humble. Again, please understand yeah. the meaning of this, the very brief story I'm going to tell. Um, a, 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 what is it now? August? I don't know. A few weeks ago, a month or so ago, however long it was, um, she called me. And like, again, when it shows up on your phone, you're like, oh, my. And the whole time we talk, I mean, it wasn't about anything in particular. It was it was a, a social call. Um, it was around Richard's birthday. And the whole time we're talking, like I, I kept on thinking about how just normal simple happy genuine people that they are Uh, there is no celebrity or bravado about them at all and it's one of the things that makes them so incredibly endearing and Mm -hmm. i've I've interviewed on the show uh two or three times i know back on show 80 was the first one Uh, again we had the uh, episode 300 that you mentioned and then there was one other time on show 135. I think it's when the boys might have come out. And by the way, mm-hmm. if you have Disney Plus, you need to watch the boys and bring your tissues with you uh, because it's, it's a it's a fascinating, fascinating documentary. Tim, follow that up. Go ahead. <laughs> Tim, you're next. Why? Why? I can't follow that. Oh. Can I? You can. You have to. I don't have anything. All right. I'm going to bring bring a little lightheartedness to the table here because I I ran out of emotional stuff. Um, I don't know. And those were amazing stories, by the way. And I I am. I do have my Disney Plus, so I know what I'm doing when we're done here. Becky, you know, it'd be cool if we (laughs) could convince Tim Foster to come on a cruise and we would do a live top 10 show. I'm waiting to be asked to go. Nobody ever asked me to go. (laughs) Maybe there's a reason for that. <laughs> We're going to have to talk offline and get Timmy on a show for a live top 10 on board the ship. Oh, dear. <laughs> Speaking of live <laughs> top 10s. Here's a good segue because I, I was going through the list. We're definitely going to take things a little lighter now for the next part. But um, as far as I can remember, although I did participate in a live Review of Mama Melrose at one point. It was next on my list, which I'm not going. So I'm not going to go there. You can do that one, but uh, which was a lot of fun. The one I believe, the one live from the park top ten that we did 
was, do you remember? Yes. We Liberty. were in Liberty Square. That is right. That is right. And actually, <clears throat> I, I can tell this story. And this is just a, I think it's a make fun of Lou story, if you want to think of it that way. So why not? Less than fun. <laughs> but I remember, uh, again, we did Liberty Square, and he didn't give me any chance to uh, do homework, which I just think was fine. But one thing I remember from that show, you yelled at me. No. You, yeah, you, I mean, you weren't. <laughs> I'm not a yeller. But, no, no. Uh, well, I, I, I'm reading my notes. You, you, you were. I think we had done. No, I know we we're Adventureland because you told me I could not get an egg roll in Adventureland. I had to make do with a pickle from the pickle barrel in the marketplace, what? Liberty Square, and I yelled at you. And uh, you know, that, it that probably was, was because we were short on time. And you wanted to go all was, the way to Adventureland, and I'm like, it was play, it was playful ribbing, of course, but you know, but you're you know, like, like a kid. I just have kid. a pickle from the pickle barrel. <laughs> that was great. So, I mean, the more we're, you rib, the more you love, right? Right. right. No, it wasn't yelling, yelling. It was just a funny moment. I remember that because uh, you're the one. It's always there's always this is all the, the all also other truism with the top tens. Uh, probably with every show, <laughs> if I'd listen. But um, it's it's always uh, you know, I bet there are g- people play, listen to the podcast and play <clears throat> social games. I'll just say, it. Uh, when is Lou going to mention food? Who's got five minutes and twelve seconds? Who's got thirty two seconds? And I know we do the top ten. It's always a, all right. When you're going to talk about food? When's it coming? And I think you've just given up and you just started getting him out of the way in your intro. So it's off the table. So, although you haven't really brought that up in this show yet. Have you? Well, you know what, Tim Foster? Why don't we just segue? Because why don't we do not, that? Here we go. Because sit back, you relax. See what I do? relax. Because my You're next. You're ready to get hungry. Without a doubt, it, it's, it's where it was time wise. You brought it up back on show number 122. Was, a, was June of 2009 was my very first live dining review. And it was at Mama Melrose's at the then Disney MGM Studios. And I remember there was a bunch of us there who were together. I think it was Star Wars weekends. We were walking around and you, me, Tony Mendike, I hope you're still listening, Scott Otis, and Glenn Whalen, oh, how I miss you so. The five of us went to, I, Tim, I can see <clears throat> exactly where we were sitting in the booth by the window. Our waitresses, our server's name was Cat with a K, who was mm-hmm. amazing. Like, I remember, like, she's like, what are we doing here? And I'm like, okay, so I've got this little handheld recorder. We're just going to give it a, I had never done it before. I had no idea, but the idea that came to me was like, if we're going to eat, and the idea of the show is to make people feel like they're sitting here with us, instead of eating and then talking about it later, let's just record it and see what happens. And you guys are like, wait, we're going to just record ourselves like eating and chewing? I'm like, "That's no, that's not it. It's we're going to talk about the whole experience and how we're feeling and what the server is like and our instant, you know, unfiltered reactions to food. And show number 122 in June 2009 was the birth of the live dining review and the monumental, exponential expansion of my waistline and shrinking of my bank account. That's where it all began. I I remember uh, um, feeling a little a little duped. At the time, I thought I was being taken out for lunch, and you were. I'm not going to do a segment for your show. Like, what is this? <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Do you remember? And we can bring it up. This wasn't really a show. This like goes in your outtakes or or near misses. I think it was the same crew, more or less. And we tried to do a live review at Flying Fish. Do you remember that? Yes, yes, I do. And uh, it did not work. It, it did not. It you did were politely not declined. Um, 
And well, because at the time it was like people, you know, it, when you walked in, sometimes people didn't understand what you were doing or even right. what the heck yeah. I was doing it for. So right. they and, didn't uh, like uh, maybe we I just think it was shouldn't. they just weren't sure and they felt uncomfortable, <laughs> right. which I can uh, which I can understand. But but the best part was it. Um, I hadn't eaten at the, fly- I, you know, I have yet to this day to eat flying fish. That was the closest. If I only there was somebody who would. Eat oh, geez. Fish with really? Me. We're going to try that now. Wait, I, I have a question. Here's my question. It was 122 was the birth of the food review, yes. right? How come it took to 458 for me to actually get one with you? Whoa. Top I've 10 reasons why. <laughs> oh, but come on. I don't do counter service. I, oh, listen, it's okay. Wow. It's okay. Because, no, no, no. Because you know what, Becky? Some what? things are worth waiting for. Oh, nice try. So 458, though, was the Tuto Gusto that you and I sat down. And, and how had. good was that? That right? was one of my favorites. That was. It's one of my favorite live fact. reviews ever. What? I'm not kidding. It's one of my favorite really? live reviews ever. You know what I liked about doing that one was because I got the to wine. Ask you you like the wine. Becky liked the six well, bottles of yeah, wine. Yeah, that, that too. <laughs> that too. But I got to ask you questions about your Italian heritage. And you told me a lot about your grandmother and what she used to make and the food you used to have. There was a, a lot of that type of um, information about you, which I found that was really interesting too. Nobody cares about too. me, but that's oh, crazy. You've got, wow. you've got little, little Lou Mangello stories. I have lots From of Grant- oh, this is why I, I even have part. I even have some pictures, pictures too. Okay. Uh, we are definitely talking. let's move on. Let's go back talking. to Becky. I've been trying and- to do the Lou Mangello pull out calendar for celebrations for. <laughs> oh, we I can even talk. mocked up. I even mocked up a New Year's uh, Eve cover. But, uh, awesome. Speaking of remember the did- cover that I drew for for celebrations. Do you still have Al- that? Uh, you Animal drew Kingdom, something. The tree of life. <laughs> tree yes. Of life. A concept <laughs> sketch for the tree of life. And. Uh, <laughs> I've seen his graphics. <laughs> my, my greatest regret with celebrations is I did not, I did not put that on the cover. I just, I just, my feeling was if I put that on the cover, there's no possible way I could follow that up with anything that could. Why don't you it. scan it in yeah, and so. put it on the celebrations or guide to the magic site, I, and we'll I and I'll direct just, people there. I, I just, I just might. Tim, do you remember? Uh, Again, quick tangent. Do you Wait, remember my fountain be- or, go ahead. meeting at the Sheraton in? Oh yeah, was it King of Prussia? <laughs> no, was- it was. Um, like everybody knows what we're talking about. No, it was up in Langhorn. Langhorn, uh, the Sheraton in Langhorn, Pennsylvania. You kept when- calling it our hotel, which was kind of weird. But that's- <laughs> <laughs> it was. It's where the the <laughs> first conversation about Celebrations magazine. To, like I, I remember, like going into the little restaurant off the like we sat in that lobby for yeah. hours, and then went into that little like tiny bar restaurant steakhouse type of thing, and that's really where mm. we first started talking about. You know, you you had this idea for doing a print magazine, and there you go. And the rest and the look on your face was what? What are you talking about? <laughs> All right, so uh, good. So what's next on your list? Well, now we're real quick. I remember. I just want to finish the the flying fish story. Was that the best? I thought the best part was, well, whether we do the review or not, hey, I'm going to eat here. This is nice. And no, the attitude was, <laughs> if they don't want us here, we're out. <laughs> so we ended up going to the Fountain View over the Swan Dolphin, having a milkshake. And and a really good say, buffalo chicken no, salad. Right. There was no live review. Uh, one of the best milkshakes I ever had, but <laughs> I still have not eaten it. <laughs> the three of us will go. We will have a once Tim comes down here again. We'll have a uh, we'll get together and we'll have yeah, dinner. I'm going to add that to my places. Lou's going. Becky is going to take oh, us out to Flying Fish Cafe. You and I probably have a long list of numbers of places and lunches and dinners that you are uh, trying to you know make up for because yeah. you've made a lot of promises there, buddy. So he oh, so does this to you too. Oh yeah, there's there's uh, at least two or three different lounge reviews or some. Um, uh, lunches that, that he listen, said he's going to take me to and places. I still will. There. There's, still, there's 600 more episodes to, to, to go. So, all right. <laughs> we'll see. All right. So, <laughs> next on my list is actually there's a reason for it, but it doesn't, it's not going to be what it sounds like. And it's number show 88 with Jim Corcus, which wow. was about the Adventurers Club. Oh. And 
I adore that sh- uh, that show for a couple of reasons. First of all, that you actually included a lot of audio from the show itself in it, which anybody who wants to go back and kind of relive two or three minutes of the um, <clears throat> of the the show itself. You can listen to that. Jim goes through all the characters and and what they meant. And there was a couple of stories, if I remember correctly, about characters that were written in, but Mm. kind of were cut from the initial show. Uh, But it it brings me back to something I loved so much. But then it also brings me back to the very first event you and I ever Mm -hmm. did together, which was the Adventures Club as it was closing. We got one of the we got the second to the last night and the last night was only for Disney executives. So we were the last public um, private group that was uh, allowed there for the show. And that was probably my, um, my baptism into what it was like to work with Lou Mangello. <laughs> You're, because, welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I stayed around. I have no idea why, but I remember having to shuffle you between rooms to make sure that you were appearing to all the guests because Disney had miscalculated the number of people who could attend. So we had to divide them into two groups, remember? Mm -hmm. And for you to be able to greet people, we had to move you from one room to another room um, via the back door. So I was literally going in and grabbing you going, I need you for something. And then running you through the back door into another room. Um, But that really was, a, a magical evening um, being able to be there for the the final event and having it be our first event together. Uh, it was, that was pretty special. And, and that sort of, you know, that kind of set the tone for all the events that we've done since like you, you've heard me talk about and Becky, when you and I plan, like it did, it set the bar so high. I I've always been again, like Disney, I always want to exceed expectations. I'm like, I don't want to just do something that's off the shelf. That in, I, I've got to do something that's special, that's different, that's unique, that's never been done before, like the Adventures Club. And over the years, we could do a top 10 events that we've done together. Our, oh, the wow. American Adventures Club, the Tower yeah. of Terror, like some stuff that we've done in Disneyland and at sea. And we've we've... Yeah, it maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll have to we'll have to figure out a way to to recap some of our our favorite events too. But that very much was um it it's on my list of some of my favorite events that we have ever done before and has never been done and can never be done ever again. Exactly. I mean, some people have tried to recreate it in the convention spaces, but there's nothing not the like yeah, being not the in the exact same place and being in the mask room and being in the treasure area and yeah. Uh, so that that show with Jim, uh, when I've listened to that, takes me back to um, to that really special yeah. event. And there's video. There's a few. Uh, it's probably not on Facebook, but I'm. Sh- it might still be on YouTube or somewhere. You, I think that we did a couple of recap videos, or there's little video clips from that night at the Adventures Club um, in some of the rooms. I remember. Glenn and I in, in front of the idol. Yeah, lots of. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have a picture of that. <laughs> I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. All right. So, Tim, what's next on your list? Well, sensing we're getting near the. How can you end this show? But I uh, have like five more. So yeah, I know. Yes. Well, I have a list of 85 shows. I'm running out. I got to go. to. I have a, uh, a, a twist on this, a list of a few of the. Uh, the best times where you kind of picked on me. Besides the pickle. Never. I would never hey, pick on you. I didn't know that that was a thing. <laughs> it is a thing. Because Maybe I'm that's up, a different show. Because I'm making up the rules as we go. I have a huge list of those. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I think I can start the ball rolling and then you, <laughs> as you remember them. But this goes, this just goes to the heart of what is it you say? The more you pick on The more us, grief I give you is directly proportionate to how much I love you. <laughs> Well, let me tell everybody how much <laughs> Lou Mangiello loves me. In show, well, we talked about how you yelled at me to make do with the pickle from the pickle barrel. In show 543, things to do when it's cold outside, which actually is one of my favorite shows because it's it was just unusual because it's never cold there. Well, it is. So, but that was fun. <laughs> you called me a... Uh, 
15 year old girl. <laughs> <laughs> now I got to listen to that one. Um, That's a nice tease, rela- Tim. Well done. <laughs> well, uh, I was relating a story about how I was actually so cold once I actually had to go into a store and buy a sweatshirt. And uh, you thought that was funny for some reason. And you said, well, you're acting like a 15 year old. I was over at whatever. It was a compliment. Uh, it was. That's what you said. The grief <laughs> is in in reverse, uh, inverse proportion to the love in your heart. So, as I said before, stop loving me so much because in episode three forty four, actually, I have this on this list for a couple of reasons. But <clears throat> the fun one was uh, you characterized me. I, I believe the exact quote was Tim Foster is a man who believes in being selfish. Words from your, your never, mouth. never selfless, it's selfless episode. No, selfish <laughs> episode 344, <laughs> my friends. Go check it out. Um, no, but th- there was wait, but you got to put it in context. I mean, what, are, what was I talking no, okay, about? Because what this was and this, it was kind of my fault. So it was it was kind of funny because this was a as we've done so many times. And I think we even did on this <laughs> show once in a while. Uh, the the patent pending trademarked uh, go with me here <laughs> and i was trying to figure out what my favorite one was and this this was the occasion of probably my favorite one and this was top 10 things we were thankful for in walt disney world i believe this was right around thanksgiving so we were in the on my list as well yep talk about things we were thankful for which, which is on the list for that reason and another one i'll get to right after this but the fun part of that was one of the things I was thankful for was Charles Mintz of Universal Pictures Studios, whatever it was called at the time. And it was, I even prefaced this with, just just go with me. This is going to be a long journey, but we're going to get back around where it's going to actually make sense. And it did. I don't think you really bought it listening again to the show. And I get, I was actually really uh emphatic about i'm I'm grateful for charles mintz and his selfishness his greed his conniving business underhanded sense because through his machinations that's how we got mickey mouse and walt disney and all this wonderful stuff um but i guess since i was saying i was thankful for selfishness and greed that's when you dropped the pearl <laughs> tim foster is a man who believes in being selfish <laughs> which i have yet to live down to this day the other thing about the show that on uh, seriously i actually liked was it was one of the occasions of which there were many when you we had you had a listener on the show uh and this was uh, scott cornelius of uh, at mm. that time uh, who was a uh, Actually, I'm not sure why he was on the show because you flat out <laughs> asked him, "What was? Why are you on the show? What was the contest you lost that wow. got you to be on the show?" And he gave kind of a non ha ha answer. So I'm actually not sure why he was on. The it show. was he won he was, won some kind of a contest. A contest no, no, it wasn't a not. contest. It was a it was a it charity was thing. It, right. it was it was probably uh, it was one of the charity auctions that we did to raise money for Make a Wish. Yeah. And I now say he's he's been one of a few a few people you've had on the show for that reason. And I always loved those shows, one, because uh, it was just nice to have. uh, Somebody I'm going to say this wrong, somebody else on the show, not because you and I are fun, but fun having, uh, you know, a listener. And I, I don't like saying it this way because it's it's not like you and me are any different than anyone else. It's a way we could actually, I, me personally, can actually talk to these people. You you talk to people all the time because hey, you're Lou and you're an outgoing, nice individual, uh, and and you do things like that. But but I rarely get to talk to your audience. That was that's that's always a nice opportunity to do that and actually you know talk to somebody else. But even more so, the the reason that these people are on your show, and and more often than not, I think with very few exceptions there are any what it, it usually is because it's a it was a auction event uh for make a wish that you did which i'm always so even in this little little tiniest way to be some part of because i think that's an absolutely wonderful part of all of this that i'll always love you for and i think it's it's great and so i think it's always great when you have listeners on the show 
one, because of that reason, and two, just because it's so nice just talking to people and sharing the love and sharing the magic and all that good stuff. You also but like he, the fact that it takes a lot of- He kind of laughed at your, your calling me selfish, too, and he kind of piled on, so it's all good. <laughs> you also like the fact that it takes the pressure off you. You're like, oh, if I there's do, three of I us in the top to ten, do, right, you only have to come I up with three or four. I only have to do three or two, maybe. <laughs> right. I can fake my way through two of them, and I really don't have to do any homework, so- it's all good. Now I see how all this goes. I'm, yeah. I'm starting to get a, a, a clearer picture of the two of you. But uh, well, that show in particular, though, the things we're thankful for also is a very just by nature what it was. That was a sentimental, emotional show as well for all the things that we were thankful for. Because a lot of it tied back to our memories and being with our family and our friends and 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 all that kind of stuff. And how much Disney had impacted our lives. So that was, yeah, it wasn't about that was a wonderful you know, thing to um, do. Yeah. It was, uh, <clears throat> which I think is, is, you know, it's a lot of what we're, we're thankful for has nothing to do with, you know, the attraction with a person. It's just no. the, everything that surrounds it. So. I don't think I've even said a top 10 that had anything to do with an attraction and all of those. Right. Right. It, and and then to think of it. So, uh, yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, you know, in, in looking through my list of shows and, and to sort of play off of what, both of you were, were talking about again people and events you know some of my favorite shows that we've done have been recapping events that we've been able to do and it's a way to sort of not only relive those memories and sort of memorialize them which is what this show to a certain degree does at least for me it allows us to capture those memories and events not just in in pictures that we might find you know online or in a bucket in your garage somewhere but to be able to preserve those. And, and I love having the audio because the emotion comes through. You can hear how it made people feel, whether they laugh, they cry, what, whatever it might be. And, and we've done some recap shows over the years that have just been some of my favorites. So back on show 137, going way, way back. And the reason why I'm going way back was because that was our very first D23 Expo recap oh right remember again becky we could do an entire show about <laughs> what that first d23 expo was like and talk about having talk about flying blind going in having yep. no idea what to expect do not you got a lot of cardboard tim foster i don't even know you probably don't remember <laughs> Oh this my was the very first D23 Expo. Becky and I decided we were both going to exhibit. Disney allowed and continues to allow third parties to come in and have a space on the show floor. It's not just part of the Disney brands, but we as fans. So certainly, Becky and I wanted to take the opportunity to have a, a booth next to each other for this very first Expo. Had no idea what to, what to expect, having it never done before. And I remember calling them a number of times and saying, look, how many people are you expecting? And I says, well, we really don't give out numbers. And I said, look, I, I'm not trying to report on it. I'm an exhibitor. I just need to know how many people to expect because I need to know how much product that I need to bring. And by product, I meant very expensive, very, very heavy celebrations magazines. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> and the number uh. isn't important. Let's just say that I finally got them to give me a number. We took that number, did some mental calculations saying, well, if this many people come, then there's this many people possibly in a group. So we don't need that many. We really need this many. And we sent, Tim, thousands, thousands of copies of Celebrations magazine there, not just to sell, but also to, to give away, to get people excited and, and well, sure. you know, to for brand awareness for the magazine. And- what when the expo was over and the way it works is that at convention centers you set up your booth they take all of your supplies and then they put them somewhere in the back and they they charge you to take them and they charge you to bring them back and they charge you to store them and when they brought them all back i have and i still have the picture becky of me <laughs> sitting on the floor literally at the bottom of this Mayan pyramid of boxes of very heavy, very expensive Celebrations magazines trying to figure out what to do because what they did, 
and and it's no fault of anybody, right? But they gave me a number that, and I'll just I'm making up a number. The number doesn't matter, right? I'm making this up, and they said, well, we expect you know thirty thousand people to be here. I'm like, oh, thirty thousand people a day. That's ninety thousand people total. But some are going to be repeats. Some of those people will be in groups. We'll extrapolate a number from that and figure out we need X amount of percentage of magazines. What they didn't tell me was we expect 30,000 people total over all four days. So it really ended up being X amount per day. And I remember (laughs) having to sit there and figure out what is it going to cost us to have them take these magazines from here to the loading dock, to the shipping company, to ship them back. And we did the math, Tim, and it actually was, God forgive me, like it was cheaper to have the magazines disposed of than yeah. it was to, to send the them back, back home. Oh, this, make, this makes me feel great. <laughs> I remember your face. I remember your face. And I, I'm glad you have the picture because I haven't seen that picture in I'm a long smiling. time. I'm crying Yo, on the inside. Well, I'm yeah, that's, that's that was probably the one smile when you realized there was a camera, because I remember your face without a camera in front of you. And those those two little lines that are in the middle of your forehead <laughs> were created because oh, no. of that moment. Oh, no. <laughs> you, you got forehead wrinkles due to that moment. Um, I, I, I th- there's rarely been a time that I didn't feel like I should just walk up to you and help you solve a problem (laughs) because that's normally what we do together is we find a problem and we figure out how to solve it. That moment I was going nowhere near you. Oh boy. You told me what the, what what the situation was and you were trying to do math. And I'm like, I was told there'd be no math. I'll be over here. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, yeah, everything is a learning opportunity. My dad always said he could always make more money. It didn't, it didn't matter. Like we got past it and we hopefully got smarter over, uh, over time. But that was just one of the examples of some of the, the recap shows that we did. That was 137. Show one, I'm going to quickly just sort of. Oh, wait, I, I, co- I, I, when I, quick ma- Is that the one I was at, the D23? Because I've only been there. No, that was the first no. one. I was not at one. That was the very, never yeah, that mind, was the very I, first I had a one. question about the one I was at, but that has nothing to do with this, so never mind. No, I don't. Yeah, so so that was the very first one. And I have to, I'll have to quickly just point out, that was a couple of different milestones because it was the first expo becky we had our booths together we literally tore down the wall in between and sort of merged and have merged ever since and it was this just amazing time that we had um i i, I want to tell us tell a, it go ahead okay you should tell so, it. so you know the story i'm gonna tell so yep there was a, a bunch of us there at the booth and it was my very first time sort of i remember it, the expo was four days at the time and i said well listen the first day, I'm going to go live for like 10 minutes and just sort of show you what it's like. Little did I know that four days and countless hours later, like I live broadcast that expo the entire time. And a couple of things happened that were, were just very impactful for me there going forward was on Friday when not one, but two people came up to the booth and said, you know what? I was watching yesterday. I had no idea what this expo was, but I saw how much fun it was on the show floor. And I literally packed a bag and I flew here. And that has nothing to do with me. It shows the power of live video and why I do what I do. It's not to say, look what you're missing. Ha ha. It's look what you're missing. I want you to be here. And if you can't be here, I want to bring it to you. And it was so compelling for people that they decided to come and it's why I do the recap shows. So people don't say, Oh man, I'm so sad that I miss it. It's I'm sad that I miss it, but next time they do it or next time there's the opportunity, I want to make sure that I take it. But as a, just a, again, a personal fanboy story. So I was walking around and at the time you couldn't live broadcast from your phone. I would have my laptop, a three G card, a wired webcam on top and like a battery pack in a shoulder bag. And I was walking around the show floor, like with my laptop turning around, talking to the people in the quote unquote box. That's where the box people group sort of, you know, helped come from. I was talking to people in the box and I would come back to the the table 
And my wife would be like, Lou, you got to come. You have to stay here. Like some dude keeps on coming back to the booth and saying he, he wants to say hi to you. I'm like, okay, fine. So at one point I'm at the booth and she points out and she goes, oh, that's him. And we were on a corner uh, of one of the little sort of side walkways and standing all the way in the corner out of the way is this dude just in a T-shirt and a hat and jeans, whatever. And I walk over and, and she's like, oh, that's the guy. He keeps coming back to the booth. And I'm like, hey, it, you know, I'm so sorry that I missed you. It's so nice to meet you. And we're just chatting about, um, you know, the expo. And I said, oh, you know, what brings you here? He says, I was going to come anyway. Like, I just love this stuff. I'm a huge fan. He says, but actually, my company just got bought by Disney. So I, mm -hmm. I sort of had to be here for work anyway. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, what company to. is it? And he says, Marvel. I'm like, <laughs> oh, man, that's so awesome. Like, it had literally just happened, like, weeks before so i'm like oh that's cool this guy is like the janitor whatever and, and he gets to come out i'm like oh so what do you do I'm like maybe he wasn't a janitor maybe he was a you know an artist or something i said oh what do you do there and he he looked at me and he's like he goes oh you know like hulk and, and iron man like the movies i said yeah he goes that's me i said what do you mean he goes i made them and i'm like i'm sorry and he says i'm kevin feige Oh my and god. At the time, now wait. I remember just this. wait a minute. So this is 2009. Again, all Kevin Feige was not Kevin Feige. Like these people were not front and center. They were not doing these kind of things and Iron Man had, you know, was just out, you know, um um sometime earlier. So Marvel wasn't Marvel, but me feeling stupid was like, oh, I have to pretend that I, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't recognize you. I'm so very sorry, blah, blah, blah. And we just start talking, whatever. And I said, God, I would love to to have you on the show to talk about the, this, you know, incredibly monumental deal. And he says, yeah, I know. He said, the ink is still sort of drying and we're figuring out a lot of things. He goes, I will, but I just, I can't do it right now. And I said, oh, let me just give you, like, I gave him, like, a book and audio tours and, like, a T-shirt. And he was like, oh, that's so cool. He's like, I've been listening to the show, like, since you very first started. I'm like, oh, my God. I said, listen, can you, can I have, like, a, you know, can I have a business card or whatever? And he, like, you know, reaches in his pockets. He's like, oh, I don't I don't have a card. He's like, but we'll we'll keep in touch. He's like, I and, and I only repeat this because it, it impacted me so. And he said this on the interview that we did um, sometime later on when when uh, back on show 519 he's like you know i listened to the show while we were making iron man and it really helped me get through what was a really like difficult process now at the time didn't i'm tell like tell me that yeah i didn't listen to the show i got you listen clearly show, I didn't listen to the interview i gotta either. listen to that show jeez yeah, that's awesome um, and i was like you know oh my god like that's so and so he walked away and then i'm like Mangello, you're such an idiot. Like, who, this guy, he's not the president of Marvel Studios. Like, you totally got duped. Like, what president of the studio doesn't have his business card? And so I start going on, you know, excite.com, trying to figure out, you know, trying to figure out how to spell Feige. And I call my brother, who's also <laughs> a big comic book fan. I'm like, who's ahead of Marvel Studios? He's like, Kevin Feige. I'm like, what does he look like? And he describes him. And he's like, yeah, he has like reddish hair, but he always wears a hat. And I'm like, uh-oh. <laughs> <Wait a minute. laughs> I think that was Kevin Feige and and you know again and I say this as a fan like um you know I I've I've seen Kevin a number of times he's come to the booth at expos um and he's a fan first and it's one one of the reasons why I love him so much is is he comes from such an incredibly authentic genuine place like he was at the expo because he just loves Disney he's such a, a huge yeah. Disney fan it, it was like three expos later that you finally introduced me to him. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but he's so genuine. Here, but... He is so genuine and such a nice guy. And um, I, that's very cool how that came along. I love that story. And look, Marion has her Richard Sherman story. And at Expo, a number of years later, he came over when my kids were there. And my kids, were, my, my son was, again, a huge comic book fan. And Kevin said to my son... He goes, I love you on the live dining reviews. He's like, you're so artistic. Yeah. Like he was just very complimentary. My kid's brain just fell out of his head. And still to this day, like he, you know, Marion has a Richard Sherman moment. He has that. And I'm just, I'm grateful for that gift that each of them gave to my kids. I totally fangirled. <laughs>
at that at that moment when he was in the booth because he turned and goes, "Yeah, I've heard you on the show." I'm like, "What? What? <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, man." <laughs> just, Sorry, I didn't mean to go. I didn't mean to go so tangential and tell stories. But again, yes, I, you did, like, and that's okay. I, I can't help but because they're good excited. stories. I get excited. So is it my turn? It is. Okay. I, I, I like I literally have four more. So are we gonna so have time for this or do I need to? You can to start? make it quick. Try and, and quick out. So let's just knock them all out. <laughs> well, Tim's like, know. I'm tired and I'm hungry. Well it, Tim. So <laughs> <laughs> mine comes back to the beautiful segue because literally my next one was recaps as well, which this will be faster. But mine were two things. Um there there were actually four shows of two recaps and both of them are from abds so mm-hmm. 496 and 497 for china yep and 568 and 569 for japan yeah and again reliving these incredible trips where things happened and occurred and listening to everybody else's perspective because why we may have all been in the same places we didn't all have the same experiences so much like you were saying that doing recaps aren't to say, no, 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 I'm here, you're not. It's more about, hey, we wish you were here too. Or, hey, these places like China and Japan aren't places that a lot of people feel comfortable about going to by themselves. Um, the, the language is different. The culture certainly is different. Uh, it's, it's not an easy language to, to get by on with basic uh, Japanese or Chinese. Having Disney uh, with you and having a group with you really helps you to explore and learn about the culture. Uh, And we experience things on these trips that even if you went over by yourself and you did a typical tour, you may not do. uh, You may not know to uh, go see the bamboo forest in in Kyoto. You may not know that in china there's you know this little family remember in china mm-hmm. we went to that family's house and we invaded their space and we got <laughs> i mean we were invited in let's be clear yes. like we did not just walk into some family's house <laughs> but i mean on on a normal vacation you wouldn't be invited to yeah. somebody's house typically so uh, being able to bring the experience to others who weren't able to travel on those trips for one reason or another maybe these shows will uh, give them a little bit more confidence or give them things to go see when they do want to go. Or when we were able to go to Hong Kong Disneyland and Shanghai Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea and Tokyo Disneyland and talk about these places that some people may not get to experience right away. So I've always appreciated that opportunity to be able to share the experiences with others that may not be able to see them and or give them something to add to their bucket list. Um, I, I mean, even just thinking about our first days in Hong Kong, where we got to go to their walkthroughs, um, <laughs> the, the scary walkthrough with a really bizarro Pinocchio and all the other things that were happening there, or you and I for the very first time going, Oh, there's a Marvel thing over there. Let's go see what it's like. And walking out with both of us having our jaws yeah. on the floor of what we just experienced. But um, we've been blessed to be able to have these experiences and go on these trips. But I've really, really, really appreciated the ability to bring those experiences to others. So hopefully they can experience them too. Yeah, the um, <clears throat> the the recap show, especially Japan um yeah. was was on my list and and to quote my favorite show ever on television uh we have to go back kate we have to yeah. go back um god i love japan just so so very much and we're going to italy in just a few months and we have other plans um london and paris we're coming for you as and we will i think we'll go back to the asian parks as well oh and i did i forgot just very quickly i eventually did get my interview with kevin feige on the show that was show 519 <laughs> Just FYI, See, so. so I'm glad you were looking that up and paying attention to what I was saying oh. at the same time, because sometimes well, I wonder spinning plates, <laughs> lots of spinning plates. All right, little Timmy Foster, if you're still awake, because I know it's past your bedtime. It is. Now, I'll finish up with two. These, these are two little ones, but these these are both a lot of finish? fun. Huh? <laughs> finish? Finish? There has to be more. So keep going. Well, I mean, there's 70, 80 more I could talk about. <laughs> The ones I highlighted, 
<laughs> oh no! Wait, wait there's one. All right, I'm do- I'm doing three in one shot because I feel like this is the last chance I'm going to get to talk. <laughs> the way you two work. <laughs> now, real quick, but my D23 story, which I guess was maybe the year after the one you did, that's my I was in the same room with Robert Downey Jr. story. I told, mm. which was great. I usually fail to mention. So we're nice. Is that the whole story? Is, is that the whole story? I was in the same room with Robert Downey Jr. I was, I was waiting no, for the rest. I stop. I stop there. I said, oh, yeah, I was in the same room with Robert Downey Jr. And then I walk away. Like, was it when you say the same room, is it men's room, hotel room, like ballroom? Like, what can you give a little more context? <laughs> I, I neglect. I usually leave out the part where there were nineteen thousand other right. of my closest right. friends in the very same room. Robert so. and I were in the same room, known yeah. as the Anaheim Convention Center. That's <laughs> right. I don't leave. There's certain details. I leave aside. <laughs> but going from that to the well, leave the what I, I tell you. One thing I had on my list, just because I had a lot of fun doing it, was when we did the top ten myths of Walt Disney World. Because mm-hmm. that was a lot of fun. Because on, on that occasion, that was the occasion I called the Library of Congress to track down the Hall of Presidents presidential seal in the carpet room and feel I debunked it thoroughly. And I'm very proud of that. But um, but the, the two that I wanted to end with, we did them in quick succession not too long ago. And the subject matter was cool, but it was more about these. See, Becky does this to me. Did you know I was coming on, Becky? No. Okay. Because no. did, did, did you know I was coming on? No. All okay. I got was, you know, come on, I want you, buddy. I want you. And there's gonna be other people. And I'll, I'll, I sent her the exact same email, just so you know. Yes. <laughs> Copied and pasted. Oh, I see. You in all caps. I you my name is Tim Eva. Foster, I can tell you something yeah. that I have never done a top ten without you. Yeah, well, it's funny. It's you're it's, supposed to I get went, sentimental. That was a no. I, was I am impact. sentimental because oh, wow. I went through the list because I was a little. I saw a lot of top. 10s I mean, I'm going to going forward. I'm, I have top tens that obviously you cannot do because you don't eat at a lot of places. But move on. All right. Well, good night, folks. I'll, I'll talk. To you. <laughs> um. Now I was going through the list. And it was it was funny. I was I was I really did these many. That's cool. But then I did have this um this little anxiety feeling of me talking to me like looking back and say oh show like 119 which was attraction theme songs and i had this vision of i'm gonna say lou uh, my, one of my favorite shows was show 119 when we talked about attraction theme songs and you would be uh dude you 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 weren't you weren't on that show <laughs> that, that was becky we did the top 10 and I, uh, God. so i actually looked through and I did listen to a lot, not the whole things of all of them, but listen to them all again. So that was nice. But the two I we did recently shows 582. It shows my 593. So not that long ago. Mm-hmm. We talked about a top, our top 10 Disney heroines and our top 10 Disney villains. But the special part was the special guests, which you did not tell me who they were going to be. Just there might be a few surprises. <laughs> and uh, the, tell Becky who those guests were, because I thought that was so awesome. I have no idea. No, it was uh, for for top 10 Disney heroines. My thought was I wanted to I knew that the show was not about Disney heroines in terms of who are the best heroines on screen. And it's more about the the women and what they represent and what they portray and the impact that they have on not just Disney fans, but, but other women young and old. And I figured that one of the best people to come on is somebody who over the years would have and continues to be impacted by these characters and the roles and the portrayals on screen. And so I brought on my 16 year old daughter. Very yep. cool. Yeah. Becky, her name is Marion. And <laughs> so she, you may have seen oh, her a couple I'm, times. I'm taking her years. on vacation in a Shut few up. years. Shut up. Shut <laughs> up. You are never taking <laughs> over my. You... <laughs> We've already got a plan. And Move so on. I, I, I'm going to mute you again. Yes. And so my son was obviously on yeah. the top 10 Disney villains in show 593. That's yeah. very cool. So, yeah, again, so those are a lot of fun. Not just because of the subject matter. I love the villains. And I, I really loved actually the heroines because I'm all. I. I you know, I, I'm all I love the 
the the female characters in Marvel and the, and Marvel and Disney and how they're getting their due and all that. And I've been for that forever, so I thought that was a lot of fun. But it was just being with the kids because I remember them all when they were little tiny tiny kids yeah. and uh, me sitting with the Marion and Deanna while you guys went on Tower of Terror because. <laughs> Little chicken exit Timmy wasn't going on either, but I had company this time, so that was fair. And hanging out in Turtle Talk with Crush with your with your little little four or five year old son at yeah. the time, so that was a lot of fun. But so that was just a lot of fun, just to get to get a little be a part of the Mongello family for just a little bit. So, Tim, you've been part of the. Was, oh, I'm going to cry again. You've been part of the Mongello family since the very first time <laughs> you and I met in that little mini ballroom at the swan That's so right. many years ago when little sweet little timmy foster oh. walked in with his home printed version of his very first iteration of the guide to the magic book tucked it's, under his I little arm that very book is on my shelf i know and i remember i tim i remember it like it was yesterday like i remember you coming over we had we all had tables in in the on the perimeter of the room in 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 yep. this early mouse fest, and you came over and you're like, you know, I'm Tim and this is the book and I made it and I remember I'm like I am not going to let you move on down the line any farther. Like I I grabbed you and I took you because my publisher at the time had a table across the 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 way. They also published the Hidden Mickey's book, and I'm like. You need to meet you and you two crazy kids <laughs> net together. I was like, and do not let this guy go because I just believed in, and I still do. Like, I still think that Guide to the Magic is such an incredibly beautiful and more importantly, <laughs> unique guide to guidebook. And I always said to you, and I still believe it, that Guide to the Magic for kids is a is a almost a misnomer because not only can kids do and play and and get so much out of it because there's so much to do with the book, but I think in adults would enjoy, and it's this big, huge like. And I still have my copies along with all your other stuff that you've done over the years sitting on my shelf. This is great. This is like episode twenty nine all over again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a book. It's called <laughs> God, God for the Magic, and uh, I hope you like it. But that was fun. But and no, you had all like, so like your mini, your other mini books too, like that you still had like the little mini books. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, not to hang like a new version of Guide to Magic is coming, but I am I'm planning on having new version of those old books again. So wait, look. So I still have. Let me blow the dust off this. The Guide to the Magic autograph and sticker book. The Guide I, to I, the I Magic, the have. Lost Journals. Going to make a new one. Yep. Yeah. Guide to the Magic, the complete descriptions touring tick this was like a mini version of the book and you had the yeah. guide to the magic journal the which journal? is a personal keepsake of your magical vacations i gotta put these things up on ebay i can get i mean i can easily get six seven bucks for these i know what i meant to say is i need I to go put these back on my show now listen tim i I'm not saying because you're sitting here like I've always believed in you. I've always loved what you've done. I've always loved the way that you do things and the reason why you do things. I love you, man. I'm not going to. But I'm cool saying that out loud. I I love you back. You know, I love you because uh, the Walt Disney World (laughs) trivia book volume two netted me five bucks on the eBay. So that was a that was a windfall. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay. Uh, All right. So to somewhat get close to um, wrapping this up. God, and there's so many that I want to include that I, I almost feel guilty. Um, oh, I get one more round. Yeah, no, yeah, that's up. fine. We, okay. we can, there's a couple. Yeah, because there's, there are some, some that, um, God, there's ones that I wanted to put on the list. Like we were, Becky, when you were talking about events before, you remember when we did the cruise with um, Ridley Pearson, Oh my and gosh, yeah. we, he and I got up on stage and I was planning on doing an interview with him live and he turned the tables and yep. threw it was everything beautiful. Up, and he interviewed me, which, yep. and it's, again, it's not because it's about me, but it was just so organic and fun and completely unexpected, not just to the people who were there watching and listening, but to me as well. I never expect, and look, I love Ridley, not just because of his work on, on Kingdom Keepers, but just such a, a, a nice, nice, smart man. 
that was a great uh, yeah it was really cool to listen to his perspective on so many things and and just to have them there personally and uh and yeah when he turned the tables on you that was fun everybody you were very uncomfortable probably for the first five <laughs> or six know, minutes because the guy is wacky sh- I, he's wacky i have no idea what he was going to ask me so you were shifting in your chair constantly <laughs> because this definitely wasn't a comfortable spot for you but um again th- but that's you know but that but the- so that was just a uh, that was actually not the yeah. one on my list that's next on my list so my second to last one is it's a twofer uh because it's a two-part episode um and I put this here because, again, my intent for the show is to help you, whether it's help you have the best. And if this is not sort of it, I, I do want to ha- make you have the best possible experience when you go to the parks, whether it's by pointing out some of the things that maybe you've overlooked, the stories, the people, the top 10. Yes, the food, um, but it's also to help you in other ways as well and i think sometimes what i've learned in in 15 years of doing this is oftentimes people can extract their own benefits from the show so i might go and saying this will be helpful for people because of this but sometimes people listen and say your show helped me because of this and maybe it's because of the information on there look there's there's nothing more um, remarkable to me that when somebody sends you an email and says, because of your show, this thing happened, this positive thing happened. You helped me through a rough time. You helped me through this loss, through this sickness, through this whatever, um, because it, it it's a bright light, whatever it, it might be like, to hear that and know that you've had a positive impact on somebody um, is the most rewarding thing of all the blessings and benefits of the show. Like those emails mean the most. And one of the shows that I think has by virtue of the response that it got uh, in terms of helping people was show 532 and 533. It was the two part moving to Disney show where I gathered other friends who had done similar things, but in everybody's story was different in terms of moving from wherever they came from into this area, this Disney bubble, whatever you want to call it. And I chose a, a, a wide spectrum of people from single people from the Northeast to couples, to families, to whatever it might be, all who came down for different reasons at different times for different experiences. And what I think it did was it showed people who had either been thinking about it or maybe had never thought about it before that. Yeah. Lou Mangiello is not the only lunatic that picked up his family, quit his job, sold his house, lost money, brought money to his closing and, you know, drove the family trucks to Disney. Like other people have done it. Other people are incredibly happy and it's more than just because Disney World is in our backyard and still to this day um, I, I still continue to get feedback about that and and I am grateful to everybody who was on that show with me or who had listened to that show and said hey you helped get me over this mental hurdle or fear that I had of doing it and I've met so many people who have moved here look the people who have moved here not because of that show but just in general have become some of my closest friends. Um, and it has nothing to do to a certain degree with with Disney per se. I think it's because all of us share a, a, a similar mindset and ideal set and, and value set. And it just happens to sort of have this this common thread of Disney to it. So the two part moving to, and I still plan on doing a, a follow up show and answering more questions about it because I know that there's a lot of people who have done the move and are thinking about doing or, or want to make the move. And if there's some way that I can help even now, um, that's the whole purpose of it. I keep hearing a lot of feedback about that show and, and people still get really excited about it. And yeah, a lot of people want to think about where they want to spend their time. So 
I, I think it was very useful, very helpful information for some of us who can't make that type of move so easily. It's a little bit of, of rubbing my nose in not being able Do to it. move to where my friends yeah. are. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah, we appreciate Listen, that. When you guys, when the two of you eventually move down here, we can eat together all the time. Just think about it. You you say that You're right I, somehow. Yeah. By all um, the time, yeah. once a month would be probably enough. But <laughs> okay, so go ahead. Lou, so, all right. We go to the boathouse now. I'm in Japan, dude. dude. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I'm, I'm busy. I'm. You know I'm, I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone all day today. I sorry, I can't make it. Remember I'm, when you guys my, used to be my my. my my thinking hoodie is is more important today. Uh, I can't leave my thinking hoodie. Remember when you guys used to come on the show? Go ahead, Becky. Get, get, <laughs> give, right. me last, so, give me your last. Give me your last one or ones. Yep, I'm going to do my my just a really quick. I have three, uh, two that are the honorable mentions, but even though they were number three and two on my list, because I was literally going in line. Um, two ninety six with Marty Scalar. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one, and I don't remember which one it was with Jack Lindquist. Um, one of the things that the shows have done for me is to introduce me to people who make this magic. And as a Disney fan or as a casual Disney fan, uh, the, a lot of those people don't get the opportunity to meet the people who are the people who are creating all of this. So to hear those backstories from the people who knew Walt and worked with Walt, um, they're going to keep these stories in a vault so that later on when we lose them, like we lost Marty, uh, we can still hear stories and go back and, and listen to uh, the contribution. So that's one of them. Uh, the, just, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was no, going to say, the next it, one, so. um, you had mentioned Jack Lindquist. Um, mm-hmm. He was back on show 228. And what an amazing man he oh, was. Oh my gosh, too. yeah. Uh, so second honorable mention would be one that we just did not too long ago, which was a, a two-parter as well, 594 and 595, the one with Walt. Mm-hmm. Um, after all the shows, after all 114 shows that I was on, uh, that was such an intriguing show because it made me think in ways that you just have to, you're always asked those questions. So to really have to think about it and put your finger on how you would uh who you would want to you know have dinner with with walt and who you how you'd want to introduce him to what park you would want him to to be at i mean i had so many different answers to it you probably could have taken one two or three of those questions and i could have probably given you top tens for every single one so that was another one my number one though my very favorite show and one that I had to listen to again uh, not too long ago is number 214. <laughs> number 214 is the Disney <laughs> Dream Recap from 2011. Um, this was one of our first cruises together. And it was special on so many levels. Uh, first of all, we had about 500 people with us on that particular sailing. Um. I went back and listened again and I, I had forgotten that Nolan Woodall mm-hmm. was on that show with us and he has since passed. So it's wonderful to hear his voice. Um, we had a surprise proposal on the stage <laughs> too, which makes me go back and think, and, and we got the Walt Disney theater. I mean, we had the big room because we had all those people and uh, the proposal <clears throat> reminded me of the fact that this show has brought together so many people in terms of friendships or we know people who are now dating or who are now married because they met from the events or from, you know, the meetups and and so forth. So that was really cool to think back to that. But the number one reason why I love this so much is because that was the cruise with the Lou roast where we got to roast Lou. Listening to the retelling of that is one of my very favorite moments. I mean, how many times do you get to see Lou in Italian boy shorts? <laughs> wait, 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 what? <laughs> Note now, to self, edit this part. <laughs> no. Out. I so um, wish this was a video show. Not a oh, video. but but the cool part is, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> the, you is have. there is a video of it. Yes. Stop and talking. And it is, right. it is out on YouTube. The roast. It, 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 Revenge Tim, I did is this for dish. you and I. 
best yeah. served cold. I did this for you and I, Tim, because yes. we we did the show. I had him totally <laughs> convinced. And and by the way, this was all Deanna. His wife came up with this wonderful plan Love and put Deanna. me and Tony Caggiano um, gave us a challenge to make sure that he never saw this coming. So I think all the things he's doing to me now, like the whiteboard and you don't know what's on it and all the 42 things that I'm going to tell you about someday after they actually happen is probably all revenge for this one moment when the roast occurred. Um, because we had him convinced that we have to go. We've got we're pressed for time. You have to wrap it up. We got to say goodbye because we, they need the theater. Um, earlier in that day, we were trying to keep him out of the theater. So Tony had to lie to his wife and his wife had to lie to and Deanna had to lie to Lou. And I mean, it was all crazy, just making sure that he didn't ruin the plan. Um, oh, oh, so man. what ended up happening was as I was convincing him that we, we've got to go, we got to wrap up the show. He and I were on the stage and we were about to say goodbye to everybody or so Lou thought. And I got to stop it and say, the magic's not exactly over yet. And <laughs> lovingly, Deanna came up, Tony came up, Lou's brother came up. They had some wonderful things to share um, about Lou Moncello. And it's all on YouTube right now. So I think uh, Lou will lovingly, hopefully, put that in the show notes so that people can actually see the roast. And if not, I'll post it in the Box People group, <laughs> which I might do anyway because it's so fun to watch well which is, which is what's nice is that i'm going to cut all this out of the show anyways so. no but what the other beautiful thing is and one of my favorite things of of that night was unfortunately glenn whalen couldn't be there but he put together a nine minute video clip about what it's like to be lou Mangiello in the parks oh dear and he was playing the part of lou Mangiello in the parks so these are two fabulous little pieces of video that you have to see. Spend 30 minutes, watch them both. That recap show obviously went, it, it really felt like we were just a table of friends recounting the best embarrassment of a friend of all time. And listen to the show, watch the two recaps. It was my very favorite show and my very favorite uh, event that we did. So and that's, just that's my list you, you can you can deduce whatever you want for this but do you notice that you never heard from glenn ever again <laughs> i'm just you saying do to him to, just you italian know, boy what did you do, do what, the what math. happened to, what happened to glenn what did you oh okay. and i'll also okay. oh boy you're all right with that so do you want to you want to uh, tell us a little bit about how you felt about i just want to say lou i don't condone anything that becky just said and thank you very much Tim. this is what are you doing towards you <laughs> really <laughs> i I'm I'm been intimidated. I I am officially intimidated. <laughs> Tim, do you have any final one on your list? I do. Uh, you made me think of one. It wasn't on list. It, uh, just a story about how this show in general has impacted somebody. And your stories of the moving to Disney reminded me of this one. And I think I told this on the show before. But I love this story so much. Just briefly, I'll tell it again. How you impacted this little corner of Pennsylvania and Iowa. And it's a story of a young lady named Brittany, who I found out much, much later, listened to WW Radio all the time, loved listening to you, um, did love listening to us, and, and got out of it that the love that was in your voice about Disney. And it wasn't just, there you go, here you go, here you go, here. She got it. And she loved Disney, but through listening to your show, she drew, got to love it so much and I guess could feel good about loving it because here's a guy who's talking about it. He feels the same way I do. This is great. Um, empowered her, inspired her to go into the Disney college program, which she did. Cool. Met a young man named Joseph SF. Hello, Joe, if you're listening. Um, they since got engaged, are now married live in Iowa now because neither one of them are in the college program anymore, but that's another story. Um, found out she didn't know any, she was from Iowa. So she didn't know anybody. So she met Joe. They got married. Um, Joe had his good friend, Michelle do their invitations, hand letter, their invitations for him for the wedding. And it was only then that she realized that this Michelle was the daughter of me 
little Timmy Foster, who was on the show with Lou Mangiello, the very show that inspired her to get into the college program and take a leap and go for it to meet the love of her life and get Aww. married. So this show changed those two kids' lives forever. And you were even gracious enough to record a little something for the wedding and they never forgot. And this, I just, that moment, or that those two kids, I just think of them and how they got together and it's all because of you, buddy. Nah. Look what you did. No, nah, that's listen. so cool. That it's all, so cool. it goes to show the power of community. Look, you know. The power of community, exactly. And Disney yeah. and love and all that. And right. that's what it's all about. You know? None of this is about me um, or anything that I've done. I've said it before. I just built the clubhouse. You are the ones who populate it. Um, and the clubhouse isn't just our group on Facebook. It is It is anybody who, who listens, whether we've met at a meet of the month, an expo, a cruise, online, in person, whatever it might, at the boathouse, wherever it might be. Um, it's amazing what you guys um, have built, what you, listener, I'm looking and talking directly to you, what you have helped contribute to. Um Look, I can. I had many more on my list. Again, there's there's stories to be told for every episode. There are people to thank. There are moments that I am grateful for. I am very hyper aware on a day to day basis just how fortunate I am to be able to do what I do and share it with you. But as I was trying to sort of think about all the episodes, um, where I sort of ended up on my list. Um, is not necessarily a quote-unquote number one because there's ones that I love. Tim, you you talked about, you know, the ones that are the corny, nostalgic, sentimental, emotional moments. It's it's the ones that uh, that make me feel a certain way that really are sort of highest on my list. I think back, you know, the whole time we're talking, I'm thinking about memories, I'm thinking about moments, I'm thinking about people, and it it fills my heart in in so many ways. Tim, I remember we did an episode. You're so cute. I love you to death. We did an episode oh, on no. show 314. It was oh. top 10 places to stop and smell the roses. And you talked before about how, like, I don't tell you anything beforehand. And it's all the rules. And you're like, no, I literally thought it was places that there were roses in Walt Disney World. <laughs> I did not do that. <laughs> I did not do that. <laughs> You're like, oh, you meant places to like relax and stuff. I had no idea. <laughs> but I, I protest. It, I, bringing it I, all... I almost looked at that one and went, yeah, because I love that <laughs> whole idea. And I, I really did that. Roses. Huh? But bringing it like all completely full, full circle. Right. And, and <laughs> we are here um, and and um, we are here because of of one person and the legacy that he left and the the the, the footprints in the stand, the sand that he had left behind him. And it's Walt Disney. And, you know, who do you want to have dinner with from history? Jesus and Walt, probably like in that order, um, you know, in terms of people who have inspired me. My dad will always be number one, but Walt Disney, you know, in terms of his entrepreneurial spirit, his passion, his hustle, his importance of family, wanting to do things for all those. Other. So we did a number of episodes about Walt, right? We talked about show 298, which was finding Walt in Walt Disney World, references to, to Walt Disney in the parks and resorts. Um, in show 319, we went taking Walt to Walt Disney World. Tim, I loved the top 10 places we would take Walt Disney in Walt Disney World. What are the things did, as I an extension? That highlighted. That, yeah, like what are the things that we would show Walt? Show 553 was Finding Florida. It was about the why, when, and how Walt brought Walt Disney World to Florida and Becky, you mentioned it, but two that were on my list was the one with Walt, even though it's a two parter, it's the one with Walt um, where again, you know, I had this idea of, of doing the show, not knowing how, um, how the people who were on the show would, would take it and how people who were listening to the show would think and feel about it. But it, it's actually one of the ones that I loved because this this series of questions that I asked 
about Walt uh, in terms of things we would show him, places we would eat with him, people we'd introduce him to, um, things he had to try, things how he might feel about certain things. I think it was a really interesting discussion about how we, as now Disney fans in 2020, um, look at Walt's legacy. And, and it wasn't just about sharing our thoughts and opinions, but getting you, the listener, to think as well the things that you would want to do with Walt. And look, it, it all comes to this idea of recognizing and appreciating and continuing to be aware that all of this, like every look, our career paths have been forged because of one man's impact on the world. And I know that sounds overly dramatic, but it's true. And like, if you're listening and you have an idea or your kid does, or you are a kid and you've got this crazy idea that everybody says there's no way that it could work and it's going to be your folly. And they, fire you for lack of creativity and all the things that Walt went through, like you need to be inspired by his journey and look at what has come as a result of it. So the shows about Walt Disney are some of my favorites. Um, Again, of all the things we've talked about and everything that the show is about, I keep coming back to one thing. It's, it's not a show about Disney. It's about people. And, and I am so grateful and I could wax poetic and bore you to death for another two hours about how grateful I am and the gratitude I have for you and allowing me to do this and the gift of your time and your attention and your friendship and support as somebody who grew up with not a lot of friends and to feel this sense of friendship now um, is, is the greatest gift ever. And I, I won't go on, but thank you for 600 episodes tim and becky i would not be here without you guys not just for the content that you share but the love and the support that you have given me um this 600 is to be shared like equally with you and everybody who's been on the show and everybody who listens to the show Um, i could obviously i could not have done this without you I think we're both staring at each I, other. I yeah. Come I, here and give me a hug. Come here, group I hug. Wanna, I want to hug you. <laughs> give so. me a hug and hug. I know. Yeah. All right, air hugs. Uh, virtual air hugs. hugs. Air hugs. Around. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> no. <laughs> thank thank you. I mean, you you have definitely elevated uh, th- this career path for me. You have brought so much uh, of this love of Disney to me and to all the listeners and to the people more than anything it's this community that you've created um we have created this yeah. is not about me okay that we all <laughs> collectively have created um i i have people that i've met because of you and you that i consider family um because of this show and I, I'm very grateful for that and, and for the opportunity. Notice I didn't even say anything about email shows. So <laughs> <laughs> that did not hit my top 10. However, thinking about it, having that opportunity to share knowledge, to get everybody um, excited about going to the Disney destinations that we've been able to talk about over the years. Um, I really appreciate you and I appreciate that ability to to share. So thank you for all you've done. I will add. <laughs> now, I, I, I owe. Hmm, it's not about you, Lou. So when, <laughs> Lou, I think there's a. I can see you on the the video. I think there's something behind you, so you might want to mute your microphone for a while. Because Becky, it really is about Lou Mangiello. I know it really is. The no, it is about the community. I, I know. <laughs> Now I know I know doing what I'm doing, and I couldn't do this without you guys either. This, this, and this is what I love so much. And whatever I'm thinking about the community and what we're doing and what other people are doing, maybe it's a weird day, nothing feels right, and all this kind of stuff. Um, looking for that inspiration and that, you know, why to keep going? Why are we doing this? Of course, looking to Walt Disney, like you said, is inspirational. But it's this community too that always reinforces to me this this is why i do this you know 
because it's for all the reasons you said. And I always feel like whenever I'm on the show or hear you or see, you know, see you interacting with people and all that, you know, me, me up here in the, in the cold frozen tundra of, of Pennsylvania, you know, I don't get to see this a lot, but, um, but when I do see it and hear it, uh, it just, this is why we do this. This is why I do this. And this is why this is not just, this isn't a job. This isn't a hobby. This isn't a, a whim. This is, this is what it's all about. Like this is, this is the deep stuff. These are the feels. This is, this is what life is, you know, and I'm eternally always grateful to be a part of this. And I think we're all grateful for what this show and what you have done for this for this whole community that is together because of this. And it's unlike any other community or group of friends I've ever been involved with. And it's just wonderful. And I'm going to cry because <laughs> Lou's already <laughs> crying. I can see. No, but I mean it from the oh. whole, so. <laughs> He's covered his camera so we can't, uh, we can't see him. You know, it's, it's fair enough. All right, now that Lou's covered the camera. So, so yeah, Becky, so yeah. speaking of videos, I, I have know. a video. I have a video of- uh, Which one? Uh, there's a video in uh, Dark Quarters of the Internet where uh, Lou Mangello and myself are uh, enjoying a kitchen sink, a pieces <laughs> of cream, arms entwined. No way. Eating each other with. Yeah, I, it's, I have it. I've been threatened. Oh, do threatened. share. Do you not know how video do works? Do share. Covering my camera does not mean I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, sh- oh, wait a minute. Uh, so, Becky, that Lou, what a great guy. I oh, know. Isn't God. he awesome? Oh, unbelievable. Listen, I would never do Listen, that I know. Could, guys, could do it, uh, yeah. seriously, I, I can't thank you enough for. <laughs> you have changed my life. You have changed my life, and that is not You're right back um, at you. Yep. Yeah. In in profound ways, I never ever could have um, imagined. Um, I mean that to you, Becky and Tim, and and I'm sure. I hopefully, if you guys don't know why, then we'll have to sit down over a meal, and I will. Um, I don't. I will let you know. And you, listener, you too have changed my life, whether we have met yet or not. Um, I, I genuinely care about you. You are not a number. You are not a download. You are not a like, a heart, a share, or whatever. I am very well aware that there is a human being listening on the opposite side, and, and you are sharing your most valuable commodity, which is your time. And uh, and for that, I am eternally grateful. You have the ripple effect of your subscribe and listen and download goes far beyond um, you just, you know, listening to me as as somebody told me when i first started who's going to listen to you drone on about mickey mouse for an hour or two or three a week um thank you for for allowing me to do this for 600 episodes and for 15 years and um as as the space mountain song said um here's to the future and you um obviously um you know the becky and tim you are more than just uh, mouse fan travel for all your vacation planning needs and celebrations magazine and guide to the magic. You've heard me talk about them for, you know, for years and years. Um, but more than what you do for the people whose gifts you share and the services and the products that, that you make for them, um, the gift that you've been able to give with your time and your talent and your friendship means more to me than anything else. So I love you. I appreciate you. And thank you. Right back, yeah. I'm covering yeah. my camera again. For back real. For real. For real. Yeah. Right we have a lot left to do. We have, we have places that we we got lists that'll keep us going to like 2032. But I want to know from you, our friend, the listener, what is your number one? Don't pull a loo and go on for hours on. What is your number one favorite episode from 600 episodes in 15 years? Go to the clubhouse, and the clubhouse is where the community community and conversation lives on the Facebook. If you go to www.radio.com slash community, it'll give you a link right there. Or better yet, call the voicemail. I'll put you on the air on an upcoming episode at 407-900-9391. Go visit mousefantravel.com and guide to the magic.com. I love you. Here is to 600 more. And I promise us, the three of us 
When we're together in Disney World, we will get together for dinner. Wait, I'm writing. I'm writing that. Write it too. down. I'm putting it on it's tape, nine, so it's here forever. Full disclosure, friends. It's nine fifty-two on a Sunday evening. Yeah. Becky is going to buy well, us dinner on, in my time zone, like. anyway. Wherever I like. Wherever you like. You guys, de- you guys decide. Becky buys, and I will be there. Don't we have? There's a list of, of places list. and things that Becky, I've been you keeping come back track. With- it's like. There's like 922 Becky, places I wanna, that we're I want supposed to go. List, I want your list of top 10 places you want to eat together. Okay. Oh, my. Okay. And be- just so you know, wait. I promise you, I have been promising Becky the top 10 lounge review. For like for seven years. Tim, I want <laughs> you on it because I can't do a top 10 without you. So figure it out and we're going to do a top 10 lounge review together. How's that? <laughs> if they got Buzz Lightyear so wait a punch, minute. I'm golden. They do. No, Becky can do it. That's... <laughs> I can I can stand in for little Timmy if necessary. Yeah, absolutely. Then he. Can, oh, you know what? I should do a top ten. And you should do a, a listener show. Done. <laughs> we should we should just Lou make we, Lou make it We'll just switch that one time. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm because scared. you've done you've done listener email shows without me. So never. That, never. Oh, yes. No. no. Never. Yes, you no, have. Never. No. I gotta go. Um. It, Basically, you didn't do it with anybody else. You just read the email and then answered the question. And read the email and answered the question. Oh, no. I used to do it when yeah. I did segments. But, I mean, they yeah. were segments on the early show. So, it's not like I did a completely dedicated show. So, I'm vindicated once again. <laughs> well, that seems like a very subtle uh, difference. Yeah, kind of. It. Well, give him this one. He's he's yeah. celebrating 600. So, you know. We. Right. We are celebrating 600. We are celebrating 600. So, let the time. All I know is either way, I'm not paying for dinner, whether it's Becky or Dave. <laughs> I'm happy I'm to pay for dinner. To, I'm, to actually I'm get fine. him to, sh- wait, to actually get him to show up for dinner, I'm happy to pay for it. Because, you Listen, know. You know what? Becky, if look at Becky, my. If you Japan, look at, he doesn't show up, that's. Look, look at that's early true. video of me and look at me now. I've shown up for lots of dinners. <laughs> Time for our Walt Disney World Trivia Question of the Week, where I invite you to test your knowledge of Walt Disney World's history or see how well you pay attention to the details, sometimes in what you see, hear, remember, taste. If you think you know the answer, you can enter via our online form for a chance to win a Disney prize package. Of course, before we get to this week's question, we're going to go back, review last week's, and select our winner. So last week, I brought you into Magic Kingdom, specifically to Liberty Square, and I asked you to tell me, what's the name of the instructor who gives music and voice lessons by appointment only in Liberty Square? First, let me thank the hundreds of you who entered, got this one correct, and knew that the answer was Ichabod Crane. So let me give you a little bit of backstory first. Appearing in the 1949 Disney cartoon, The Legends of Sleepy Hollow, Ichabod Crane is the schoolmaster of a little school in Sleepy Hollow, and he earned some extra money on the side by giving music and singing lessons. And he is from, obviously, the 1820 story by Washington Irving. So if you look in Liberty Square, the music teacher shop displays a number of different musical instruments as well as fiddles and mandolins. And there's also sheet music framed on the wall with traditional holiday songs and English favorites like The Holly and the Ivy and I Saw Three Ships. But if you go back outside you'll see that just over the doorway is a sign that says music and voice lessons are by appointment only and given by Ichabod Crane. And while the school teacher might have been a little daydreamy and stern with his students, he actually loved not just the town's women, but more importantly, their cooking and would often exchange lessons for food. I like his, I like Ichabod Crane's style. Anyway, I took all the correct entries, randomly selected one, and last week's winner is... Carla Philomena. So, Carla, congratulations. You use the online form. I have your shipping information and we'll get your prize package out to you right away. If you played last week and didn't win, that's okay because here's your next chance to enter in this week's Walt Disney World Trivia Challenge. So, this week, I want you to simply tell me where in the world have you heard this phrase? And finally, it's time to decide who gets to portray me Oh, you've got some awfully big drawers to fill. And finally, it's time to decide who gets to portray me. Oh, you've got some awfully big drawers to fill. 
If you think you know the answer, you can go to www.radio.com, click on this week's podcast, use the online form there, and this week, you're not playing for the digital products, the books, and the audio tours, but instead a brand new prize, which is a brand new WW Radio mug. So I will send it out to the randomly selected winner. You have until Sunday, August 30th at 11.59 p.m. to get your answer in. And if you love trivia and playing along, be sure to follow me on my Instagram stories and posts at Instagram.com slash for some daily Disney trivia. No contest, no prizes, just isn't easy, fun, takes a few seconds to play, test your knowledge, and hopefully learn something along the way. So good luck and have fun. That's going to do it for this week's show. Thank you again so much, not just for listening this week, whether it's your first time listening or you've listened to all 600 episodes from the bottom of my heart. I sincerely am so incredibly grateful to you and for you, for your time and your love and your friendship and support and community and everything that you've done to make WW Radio possible. And of course, extra and huge thanks goes out to some of the new and longtime members of the WW Radio Nation family, including Bill Clunder, Ray Kastner, Matt Shaw, Jack Willard, Carrie Ann, Jalen Carr, and Amanda Walters. I cannot express my gratitude enough for you and everything that you do to help WW Radio. And if you want to find out how you can not only help the show, but get exclusive rewards every month, including monthly scavenger hunts, We have a private Facebook group. I send out trivia quests. There's magic band covers, logo gear, t-shirts, monthly care packages from Walt Disney World, exclusive live video group calls, and lots more. You can visit www.radio.com slash support. Of course, it's completely optional. Starts at as little as a dollar of the month, but it's a great way to not only help show your support for WW Radio, but don't forget that a portion of the proceeds of your contributions do go to our Dream Team project to directly benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. I know this is a long show, so just a couple of other quick reminders and announcements. Don't forget to join the community and conversation in our group on Facebook. Go to www.radio.com slash community, not just for a link to our Facebook group, but how you can join the running team, the WW Radio Nation, and join us every Wednesday night for WW Radio Live. While you're there, be sure to check out the all-new, completely built from the ground up, www.radio.com website. And if you'd like to write for the blog, I'm currently looking for some bloggers and con- con- content contributors, as well as a number of other different roles to fill. So if you go to www.radio.com slash contribute, you can find out how you can be part of the WW Radio team with some content and social media marketing, community relations, blog editor, sales, etc., of course, like I said at the beginning, this show and site and everything really is by, for, with, and about you. So if you have a question you'd like me to answer on an upcoming episode, you can email me, Lou, at www.radio.com or call the voicemail at 407-900-9391. That's 407-900-WDW1. I am hoping and praying that someday, very soon, we can get back to doing WW Radio Meets of the Month in person back in Walt Disney World. Until then, you can visit our events page at www.radio.com slash events for upcoming events, including our Marvel Day at Sea Cruise coming up this January out of Miami, fingers crossed, and our WW Radio Adventures by Disney group trip to Italy in March is currently sold out. But if you'd like to find out more and get on the wait list, you can go to www.radio.com slash Italy 2021. If there's some way that I can help you with your idea, your dream, turn what you love into what you do, I'd love to find a way to help work with you either one-on-one. I still have a couple of spots left for my weekly mastermind group. To find out more how I can help you, your business, or your school, please visit the all-new LouMangelo.com. And as always, my friend, and now more than ever, you are my friend, whether we have met yet or not. All I ask is that if you like the show, please help spread the word. Let others know. Tweet out that you're listening. Share it on Facebook or Pinterest or Instagram. Take a couple of seconds just to rate and review the show over an Apple podcast. I want to thank some recent reviewers like Roscoe the Rev, who says lots of fun and unusual Disney. It's one of the best Disney podcasts out there. I love listening to Lou and so many guests sharing their love for all things Disney. CMC Lush SSA says to join the WW Radio family. As a form of entertainment, the WW Radio show offers incredible variety with its interviews, top tens, live reviews, history, listener emails, and more. However, 
The show and a toast, Lou Mangiello, offer more than just entertainment. They offer community. They offer inspiration. They offer a home to those who may feel like they don't belong anywhere else. And as of this week, I've officially listened to every single episode, and I want to thank Lou and the entire family for accompanying me on many long rides to and from auditions, bringing me joy in the days that feel dark, for inspiring me to join the WWE running team for my first half marathon, yay, and for encouraging me each week to do what I love and have my best week ever. You have no idea what a joy it is for me to be part of the clubhouse. CMC Lush, the feeling is so mutual for you, for Roscoe the Rev, for you who's listening, who is part of this community and family, which is hopefully what you took away from this week's episode. Um, That's really what it was about. It was never and is never about me or the show. It's about you and the joy that you bring me, the, the impact that you've had on me and so many others. And hopefully I'm able to reciprocate with the things that I'm able to do and share with you and the things that we can do together. And that ripple effect, that positivity continues to spread to more people, which is always why I ask you to help spread the word, to invite other people in. Um, so we all have a little bit more of a positive impact on each other. I am not going to spend or waste any more of your time trying to remind you just how much I love and appreciate you and how grateful I am. 600 is something that you should be very, very proud of. And I am honored and and humbled by the fact that you spend and share your time with me. I mean it when I say if there is some way that I can repay your kindness, if there's some way that I can show my gratitude, please just reach out to me and let me know. Um, thank you for 600. Here is to another 600. Um, I promise you the best is still yet to come for you, for us, for the show. And I really do hope that this is your best day, week, month, year ever. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. See ya. Hey, Lou. It's Christine Morrison from Flower Town, Pennsylvania. I haven't called in in a couple of weeks. Not that I haven't been paying attention. I've just been extremely swamped here with pet sitting and everybody is hitting the Jersey Shore for July and August before school starts. So I am really busy and um, haven't had time. I have listened to all the shows and I've been watching every Wednesday night. I did watch 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, but I didn't get to Frank just yet. I will do that shortly. I just wanted to call and say hi to everyone. And um, I'm listening, I'm re-watching the broadcast from tonight. It's Wednesday night right now um, because I wasn't able to tune in live for the whole thing. So I'm going back to see the first hour that I missed. And um, you're talking about how you were discussing with someone um, how important it is when you podcast. You don't know how what you say will affect someone's life and I know that I speak for probably all of the box people uh, now that live in the clubhouse um, that without you and the podcast and your positivity um, I think a lot of our lives would be different I know that your podcasts have really interjected a lot of positivity into my life and um, I now do see the world through rose colored glasses even through this pandemic so I'm always looking for the good to use the good and it actually gets easier and easier and easier and now I can't even go back the other direction anymore I look at everything in a positive way it's just my nature um, and it just sort of happened but thanks to you guys and the podcast and the box people and it's the best, best group I've ever come across in my life. And I know I've told you this before, but anyway, I won't ramble on. Have a great week, you guys. And um, I'll see you all in the box slash clubhouse. And I can't wait for the 600 show. It's going to be awesome. And I have to go watch Frank. I'll talk to you later. Bye. 
Hello, WDW Radio family. This is Christina Kloss from Merrimack, New Hampshire. I wanted to call in to congratulate you on show number 600. I also wanted to let you all know that I finished listening to all 599 previous episodes, which is usually when Lou says, that's a lot of Lou. Personally, I think it's just the right amount of Lou. And Becky, and little Timmy Foster, and WDW Radio Run Team recaps, and live dining reviews, and Darlene Nagy, formerly of West Seneca, New York, and Elizabeth from Massachusetts, and Christine Marsden from Flowertown, PA, and the entirety of our WDW Radio Clubhouse family. Thank you all for taking me along for the ride over the past few years and letting me be part of the community. Congratulations again, and I look forward to the next 600. 